birth. We're 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 on, yay. yay. Sorry, I got distracted by anecdotes of, of pot belly pigs. Because those make me very happy. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to uh Divide and Conquer's uh now Rise of Tiamat. We are now officially in the throes of the second half of the Tyranny of Dragons uh campaign written by Wizards of the Coast. I'm trying to grab my book because I flounder for words. Da, da, da. So we are now officially within this book, and I'm excited. Yay. So it's... We'd get this far. You never thought we'd get this far? Well, <laughs> chapter one. Someone is... Chapter one. Um, anyway, so... Uh, it's Monday, guys. Uh, do we have any special announcements before we do our usual gigs? Or uh, I know that uh, two, right off the bat... First, uh, next Monday for our Reroll podcast, we'll be discussing uh, uh, the idea of responsibilities for content creators uh, with Ooh. the rise of the internet and accessibility slash the death of an author type of theme. Right, um, right. And secondly, our link for Extra Life is still up uh, because uh, Frissy Kraken and their team uh, have challenged us and they're trying to raise more money than we did so we need to continue to make more money uh for the uh, uh miracle foundation which yeah. our uh donation parts going to texas children's hospital um because the more money we raise the more money they have to raise therefore the kiddos benefit from it all for the kids all for the kids yes also jeremiah has a really cool shirt on he does. Oh, that's right. We have our uh, our shirts in our merch store. Jeremiah like right t-shirt. Pocket Paladin. Yeah, Pocket <laughs> Paladin. Ooh, Jeremiah. A Pocket oh, Paladin I... for uh, and I also have a healer. Ah, Pocket Cleric. Pocket Cleric. <laughs> pocket Cleric. <sighs> yeah. So we uh we have those uh shirts in our merch store right now that they were uh special made for our extra life event so if you want them you can still get them they are there yeah yo. And the link for that's down below uh also uh on our links down below we have uh our friends at talon and claw Ooh. which you you got yeah you got, got your things I got that oh yeah actually speaking of things excuse me things talon claw merch. Oh, excuse me more talent claw merch excuse me so much you have so much merch i uh i have I, uh, you can, some can say I'm a talent and claw enthusiast. I'm opening this book. Oh, look at all that talent and claw merch. Also, we got some like, chain design here. But the, pro, the the cool one, the really cool one, is oh. this whiskey barrel dice vault. Oh, nice. You got it. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look Beautiful. At How good does it smell? It actually smells really good. Nice. I have a thing where my tongue, I can't touch paper or wood. Like, it literally uh -huh. gives me goosebumps all over and, like, it fucking freaks me out. Uh, just smelling that, it may give me that same chill. Therefore, it's good wood. Good wood. So, it was good wood that gave uh, Jesus the goosebumps. Yes. All the tingles. <laughs> with the good wood. I mean, good woods. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, my dude. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, as always, you can check out our friends Town and Claw. Uh, their link uh, to their Etsy shop is down below on our Twitch page. They make wonderful uh, wooden tabletop products. They've got this beautiful uh, whiskey dice vault that was for their Kickstarter they ran a while back. They're always coming up with new awesome things that you can yeah. see uh, in their shop. They're always updating their shops. So they have their uh, their wooden dice, their dice vaults, dice trays, DM screens. Um, their spell slot trackers are their newest ones, and I know they're working on a, a personal project right now, which is their own gaming table, and I'm excited to see how awesome that's going to look. It looks really cool. Oh, yeah. And then we also have a coupon code for y'all if you want to uh, check out any of their stuff. Uh, if you use the code Divine Conquer at checkout, you get ten percent off on your purchase. So go uh, go check them out and go support them. They are really awesome people doing amazing things. And uh, speaking of awesome people, Led, we're <laughs> this time it wasn't a short joke. This time it wasn't. I know. Uh, I I was I was startled. I wasn't expecting that. Good. <laughs> yes. Wasn't, ex wasn't expecting a compliment. Uh, well, let's talk about our thing that we're doing. We've been, gosh, we 
it's been a year, hasn't it, since we've like planned it, right? It's been it's been about a year since we started formatting it, actually. Oh. Yay. Anyway, we're talking about uh the webcomic that Vic and I it's our little passion project. Yes. Uh, it uh, we did take a hiatus on it and it is going to be uploaded on Webtoon on Monday, so the next Monday. Yes, so Should next Monday it will be newest chapter of Alistair, so keep a lookout for that. But if you yeah. uh, want to get chapters and content early, you could always subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, we have the link for that down below as well. It's a, as little as a dollar a month. You get uh, extra content, like behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes you get lore updates. Uh, last week we just posted uh, a lore update for uh, the world of Alistair, where we talked about um, essentially the barbarian tribes that live out there in that world. Mm-hmm. And then every now and then you'll get... Uh, character like depending on what tier you get character profiles you get uh we have our zesty tier for the art that we literally will not post anywhere else on the internet <laughs> except for jesus we except only send jesus. It to jesus jesus only ever demands i am a queen. that reminds me i have not sent you uh last month but anyway <laughs> <laughs> love it so yeah uh check it out uh support us if you'd like uh, and if you subscribe to our patreon uh Again, at the one dollar tier, you get access to our Discord, where you get to come hang out with us and a bunch of other cool people as we as we all work on our passion projects, uh, support each other, and uh, just have generally general fun role play and play games. Pretty awesome. Yep. Yep. I so yeah, it's it's exciting. So yeah, that's all that. I believe that's all of our uh, announcements. That, that's, that's all the announcements. So. All right. Oh my then god. Then let's we're, we're doing good. Wow, we're doing good. Oh, wow. Wow. Very let's quick, experience. let's get through intros before we screw yeah. something up. Something's gonna happen. Something's Small gonna happen. Audio issues, we ran through announcements correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. So hi, I am Vic. I will be your DM for tonight. Uh and next to me is the wonderful and beautiful and adorable. What? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Tabitha. I will be playing Patience, the Tiefling Sorcerer. And then next is uh, a, 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 a big boy. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Jesus. I'll be playing Tarsius, uh, a 21 year old Minotaur fighter. Uh, I'm just really excited to be out in the world. Oh, so cute. Yeah. All right. And now we have uh, the beautiful and uh, the be- the beautiful Jeremiah. What do you got? Hello, I'm Jeremiah and I am playing Cordelia Chaddington. <laughs> um, uh, an uncursed Medusa who is a fighter rogue. Yeah, yeah. So excited. And then we have uh, the the local fish people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm Stephanie. I'm going to be playing Olivia Neolani, Tormenta, the first of the tor- uh, um, mouthful of words. Uh, she's going to be your Tempest Cleric of Chaos, Tempest Cleric of Fuckery. And... <laughs> Correct. That is a domain of fuckery. That is a domain that I need to make in our new homebrew. (laughs) And then I'll also be piloting Yuli for a little bit. He's um, a blood hunter slash babysitter. And now officially getting paid enough. (laughs) No, finally. (laughs) If I might protest, still not enough. Probably (laughs) never enough. Never enough. All right. And then uh, we have uh, the goodest boy for last. Yay! Uh, my name's Lynn. I'm playing uh, Sir Alistair Evander Belmont. He is uh, just the best boy. He's a, a paladin of uh, the Order of the Holy Brethren. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yes. I'm excited for this. Oh, All right. And so. guess what? We have a new intro for the campaign. We do! That's right! Yay! So, uh, so let's, let's roll it. Yeah, let's roll it.
Okay. And we're back. So, it has been quite the journey uh, through this campaign. Uh, a group of heroes banding together to uh, stop the shuttling of gold and treasure to what is known as the Well of Dragons uh, by this uh, group known as the Cult of Dragon, as they are trying to free Tiamat from her imprisonment within the and so, for lack of better wording, the day was saved. You managed to, well, they managed to um, secure a cloud giant's flying fortress for their own um, means of uh, base of operations to uh, disrupt any more trade routes that happened throughout the Sword Coast. You managed to upheave uh, the Tatteric Estate completely from uh, being benefactors to the cult and supplying them with gemstones and components. And you've managed to also keep a single white dragon mask out of their clutches. As the dragon mask had sailed off into the sunset, uh, the Tatarix also sailing into the sunset, Janva moving into a more defensive and tactical position within uh, the fight against the Cult of the Dragon. And Berterai moving on to train his son now uh, the ways of uh, blacksmithing so he could forge his own blade. Which, in Ro's opinion, means that he will use to absolutely behead Tiamat one day. <laughs> All five. All five heads. <laughs> Hashtag facts. <laughs> Hashtag facts. And so now this brings in uh, a new arc of adventures. Ophelia and Yuli, uh, you taking up residence within Waterdeep, as you have been attending these uh, now uh, becoming more frequent council meetings uh, among the uh, the masked court of nobles in Waterdeep, mm -hmm. as they have been growing quite concerned with the movements of the cult. Uh, one such woman, uh, Romalia Haventree, who is a close friend of your mother's. She, having her husband murdered within the dead of night by a what would be a member from the Cult of the Dragon. And so it was by her decree that this council be brought together in order to uproot this cult and stop their plans to bring Tiamat. And also with that, bringing in a new order into the city as this new paladin order known as the uh, Order of the Holy Brethren. Uh, knights that dedicate themselves to a god by the name Frat, which uh, <laughs> upholds a code of absolute righteousness. <laughs> and then also two new adventurers coming into the scene with uh, one with her uncles as they are looking to begin the foundations of their new uh, tavern slash uh, magic shop as one is a very well renowned cook the other one a pretty, uh, a pretty good uh, up and coming artificer only learned from the best <laughs> And then uh, Tarsius, a young, young nobleman who is looking to explore this world and see what adventures that you will have. And then Patience, who... <laughs> I think that describes Patience very well. Yes, uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, no. <laughs> a young tiefling girl who approached the city... Well, not alone. You had Greta with you. Yes. Greta counts as a guardian. Greta is my guardian. Greta is your guardian. A uh, a white mountain goat that <laughs> is essentially a a figurine. Yes. Sometimes, but figurine she's a very respectable lady. Obviously. Huh? She's a very respectable lady. Very. Obviously. Absolutely. Which you came into Waterdeep looking for someone who looks absolutely just like you. Because you and I found it. and you 
we will get to that. <laughs> As you had come into the city looking for somebody, and this was somebody that was going to answer a very important question for you. And that was, where are your wings? Because these are a very important question. And so, if I may get into it, backtrack into that. As you were all going about your days, uh, Tarsius and Cordelia reuniting with each other, catching up uh, with your uncles and telling stories of what you've seen so far. Tarsius, you letting them know what, uh, what uh, Uncle Chad's been up to and how he uh, sent you out into the world to go explore, but also, you know, in the good name of the Chaddington Gentleman's School, of course. <laughs> of course. And Ophelia, you, for the most part, being... What's the word? Cabin fever? Being stuck in one place for too long, you're starting to feel the necklines of your dresses growing tighter and tighter with each passing day. As your mother was beginning to become almost insistent that you need to you you need to marry soon. <laughs> <laughs> I have the one in All while uh all while keeping tabs with your new best friend. A man that goes by uh the green eyed magpie. <laughs> we have similar relationships with our body our he was willing to give you uh, tips and tricks on how to uh, catch the interest of your bodyguard. As he seems to have quite the experience. And so, it is on this day when everybody is amidst what seems to be another normal day. When you start to hear what sounds like it sounds like thunder at first. At least that's what you thought it was. As it just kind of rolls over the city. Followed by the rhythmic beating. Large, leathery. And then the next thing you know. You hear what sounds like something exploding. A buildings crumbling, people screaming as smoke starts to waft through the air. Let me get everybody the map so I know where everybody is. Excited. I'm looking forward to this game for uh, I have been looking like forward two to weeks. this. I, uh, two whole weeks. I need this more than ever. <laughs> All right. Ah. Uh -huh. Kira is our dragon. Ah, uh, 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 that's close. As Ophelia and uh, Yuli, you uh, uh. mostly having residence within. You would have been within the Sea Ward, which is close to where, um, essentially, where your family's uh, vacation home is, Ophelia. So that's where you would be spending your time. Tarsius, Cordelia, you would have been in the dock wards as that was where your uncles have set up their new soon-to-be tavern. It's up and coming. They're still unpacking. Oops. Which, naturally, it's going to be a process as West seems to unpack a few boxes and gets a little distracted and goes off to do something else, and then you have to get him right back to task. And Alistair and Patience... Uh, Patience, you having come in through the southern gate, as it was the closest one for you to reach. <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted by a thing she's drawing. I'm, ge I'm getting, this is going to be immersion for later. This is immersion for later. Okay, so you're drawing something in pa for Patience. To, to, okay. Yes. I can't wait. As Patience, you would have come in through the southern gates. Uh, Alistair, that being the gate where you and your good buddy Jayon have been... Uh, dutifully guarding that day as you would have taken her uh, you deputized her you took her to <laughs> the dock for the most part to get some lunch and uh, overall just to be a good uh, guardian for this obviously unattended child and so as the dragon 
flies over the southern ward and you all hear the sounds of chaos that emit from it. I'm ready. Same. I can just imagine Ophelia in the middle of the street noticing what the sound is and be like, oh, it's a, a dragon! Like she did in the first episode. So, as you hear the sound, what is everybody doing when they hear the sounds of a dragon? Uh, as soon as I hear Can that, you... after yes. having like seven boxes, put them down very gently. Yes. And look up, and then, Cordelia, you'll see this excitement that you've never seen in your brother as he just grabs his great axe. Where the fuck is it? I'm just looking up. Uh, yeah, when that happens to Cordelia, uh, to tell, Cordelia is a little bit scared. Okay. Puts her hood on a little bit more tighter because she needs to go outside, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, tap Cord- uh, Tarsius is what? Like five? I mean, seven foot? Eight. Uh, he <laughs> is uh, eight three, oh, my dude. He is okay, eight so Cordelia- foot three. So Cordelia is five foot four. <laughs> so I'll tap you on the elbow. <laughs> yeah, basically that's where you're where you're reaching him. I'm gonna look down. Just be really excited. You can actually see him. Just... Tap you on the elbow. Was like, oh. you're too tall right now. I'm gonna get on the knee. Yeah, and then and then step, well, one foot on the knee. And then one foot on the shoulder, and I'm sitting down on your shoulder. I'm standing up. <laughs> no. What? Almost 10 feet Grand. in the air. Yep. Uh, hold, hold, hold a little bit, basically, on your horn. It was like. <laughs> Boy, it's a forward. Let's look for this dragon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. All right, if you're looking for the dragon, roll me a perception. Uh, first of all, uh, let's. Uh, where are first, we? this is my first roll for Cordelia. <laughs> Come on, girl. Bro, not even oh. joking. That's a yes. nat twenty. <laughs> oh, oh, damn, Tarsius. Like right okay. next, oh. to, right next to his mini too. Oh, oh, Beautiful. You can't see it. You can't see it. Oh. Whatever, it's there. Unless <laughs> you're telling. Yeah, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Oh. Okay. Mine is a twenty-four. I rolled a nineteen. <laughs> oh, well then. <laughs> Oh. All right. As you guys are running through the through the streets, uh, trying to make your way towards where you are hearing the most uh, uh, general commotion, you uh, you can see the smoke starting to billow up thick and black, and you see people are starting to like crowd the streets as they are, as they are rushing past you, trying to get away from uh, the glows of the fires that you're starting to see, and it starts to heat up. I. Uh, And as you do, the dragon, um, since you see it, I'm going to have both of you roll me a dexterity saving throw with advantage. advantage As you see it start to rise, like crest and rise over the buildings of Waterdeep. Uh, What'd you get? 18. 18, okay. Oh, what'd you get? 25. 25. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> As you see the tips of the wings rise up over the buildings first, and then it just propels itself over you. And as it does, it opens its jaw as this line of fire sweeps through the buildings, causing the stone and the glass just to shatter and explode. Just some of the street begins to melt as you, Tarsius, you man, you see the dragon come and you immediately yoink Cordelia off of your shoulders as you tuck her into your arms and you just kind of like hit against like the opposite wall as the as the row of buildings like the, on the opposite side of you just explode with fire. That's exactly what I was saying. I I, to do. Like in my head, my dude. That's exactly <laughs> what I wanted to do. Guys, I'm going, I need to roll the damage for that real quick. Um, there's damage. We passed the deck save, but there's damage. There's still gonna there's gonna be half damage because you guys are Uh, right there. I want to tuck my shield 
and shield master. Shield master. Okay, so you will take no damage. <laughs> I'm taking damage. Give me. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be the bludgeoning damage from the building. Okay. So that's going to be 15 half. Okay. Uh, and then let me do the fire damage. Do you round up or down? I round up. Okay. Cool. Eight? Mm-hmm. And then it'll be eight fire damage. Okay. And then you take that half. So four. Four. Okay, cool. Just whale to oodle. All right. All right, as the dragon passes overhead, causing this line of buildings just explode right next to you, and you just hear the screams of, of people as they're trying to to run and get away as fast as they can. What do you yeah, do? When, uh, when that happened immediately, you'll, you'll hear, you'll, uh, what's this? Tarsius right. will hear a little bit. It's a little muffled because it's under her hood. It's going to be sh- sh- like, a, like a little shake. There's a little rattle that's coming out from my hood. And I was like, well, I guess we found a dragon. <laughs> I guess we have Sissa. <laughs> Let's I'm look around. Fuck some would shit up. <laughs> like, sh- they're listening. They can <laughs> hear you. <laughs> Cover my <laughs> As I'm going to stand up and almost like a binky for like any... Uh, any like um, a rodent, I'm um, just gonna like skip a little bit in excitement, grab her under my arm, have my uh, two handed Grand X <laughs> just running against the crowd. Against the crowd, all right. Yeah. So, are you running against the crowd as the because the dragon it passed? Okay, I'm trying to. I'm going towards where the dragon is. Okay, so you're following the dragon. So, yes. you would now be following the rush of the crowd as they have oh, been okay. trying to make it to the docks. If the dragon's going towards the docks, then yeah, I'm going towards the docks. All right, so that's where you'll be heading. Put you guys down by the docks. As you're rushing by and you just see the flames start to climb up buildings as uh, you see people trying to grab what little that they can, uh, mothers grabbing their children, people trying to herd uh, their stuff, uh, their, their horses and, and their uh, cart-pulling animals uh, out as fast as they can. Um, Alistair and Patience. <laughs> as that happens to them in that moment, you see the smoke start to rise up. You see fire start to climb above the buildings where you, you both of you sit at the docks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you see the dragon start to circle over the harbor as it flies out from the city, circling over the harbor, you see it open its mouth again as it just shoots a line of fire across uh, the ships that were docked there. Um, what do we do? Huh? What do we do? Uh, she's gonna stand up and make a beeline straight for the dragon, yelling at, Hey! <laughs> In pure toddler fashion. Not saying she's a toddler, but... <laughs> Uh, Alistair, your deputy is now yelling uh, at the dragon to get its attention. Uh, he's uh, he's gonna stand up. Uh, has he seen a dragon before? Not in person. Okay. Only he knows in they exist. books. They know he knows they exist. Uh, okay. Your uh, mentor, Sister Sarah, having been one that has faced one before. Okay. Yeah, he's he's. I imagine he's like sitting on the docks, like eating a sandwich. Yeah, that's, and then, that's like, where you guys would have been. We're doing, yes. He, so he's just gonna be sitting there. He's gonna like kind of get startled, drop his sandwich, be sad for like a half a second, and then stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. And, oh. <laughs> I take I take back what I said. If anything, patients want to take whatever food she had left, shoved it in her mouth, and then yelled out, "Hey." <laughs> So you, you literally uh, shove all of your sandwich in your mouth like a hamster and just go, Rah! Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he'll uh, stand up, he'll put his helmet on with his beautiful red hair flowing underneath it, and then mm-hmm. he'll, uh, take, he'll take his uh, great sword and kick it up, mm-hmm. up onto his shoulder, and then just kind of get ready. All right. He's like, okay, okay, bro, 
And he's going to yell as well with patience. As you both yell at the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me! <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my god. Patience, is there anything specific you're yelling? Um, yeah. Basically, yeah. Hey! You! How come I don't have wings? How do you... Oh, God. As it... No, no response. As it swoops by, uh, torching a line of ships in the harbor, you see it, uh, kind of, like, cut down a one wing kind of clipping the water, and then it just circles back up, and then it goes back the other way. How far away is it now? For you guys, uh... I'd say it'd be about 60 feet out on the water. How high is it up in the water from in the air? It is... It would have been... When it when it would have touched the water, its body uh, would have been about probably 15 to 20 feet up from the water itself. Okay. And then it's now c climbing. Okay. So it'd be going 50, 90. So 50. he ignored her. Mistake number one. Your Alistair is gonna see this tiefling child just stop, reach into her bag, really angry, oh, and angie. she's gonna pull out, pull out a little jar of paint. Okay. And she's gonna sit there and pull out a piece of parchment, slap it on the ground, and she's gonna think for a second, and then she's gonna draw aggressively. <laughs> Alistair's just gonna look down and be like, "Uh, now's not the time for arts and crafts. I don't think." <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> and I already oh, have the picture oh. drawn. Please post it, Vinch. I'm gonna post it. Alistair's gonna recognize it as, um... Well, the other person that was on the... No. No. Because she's trying I'm to scared. think of the best means of ammo right this second, and yeah. that... I can't. No. I'm just gonna. Oh no! This is gonna be good. Do we? Do we? Uh, do we see them? Uh, roll me a perception. Okay. Alistair's in full uh like guard battle stance. That's okay. uh, I've rolled two sixteens and a twenty, so that is a uh twenty one for perception. Okay, so cool. you would see as you make it to the docks, you see the line of fire that is cutting through the boats. And you see at the end of the end of the docks, uh, what? Oh my God! Oh, that's, oh, a, that's, that's an angry, that's an angry drawing. <laughs> that's super angry. Please, drive. please, please share that on Twitch if you can. I, I will do so, my dude. That's this important illustration that's happening here. <laughs> if Alistair questions what she's drawing, oh, it's your friend that was with you, right? <laughs> As uh, Tarsius, you would have seen. Um, you see, the, you see the fire, and then at the end of the docks, you see one huge, imposing knight, helmet on, sword drawn, and ready to Open. fight the dragon. And then you see one tiny little tiefling girl jump, jumping up and down on the docks, yelling at the dragon. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Alistair, you're gonna see this eight foot <laughs> minotaur just walk right in front of you, step over the little girl, and uh, he's gonna see that he places his great axe on the floor, and just take out this huge bow that might be almost uh, six feet in length. Brother, I got this. And I'm gonna look at, at him specifically and say brother, and launch an arrow at the dragon. All right, roll me, uh, roll, roll me an attack. Plus, in your wings, you big lizard. Yes. Yes. Where is my bow? Oh, there we go. Plus five. That's sixteen to hit. Sixteen to hit, you said. Yep. Uh, if he's Ooh. out of one hundred and fifty feet, then that's a disadvantage to that. He would have been within range at that point, okay. I would say, but sixteen oh, does not hit. That's that's the uh, okay. that's the image that she's drawing. Just so everybody knows the Angie elf. All right. Switch these it. Beautiful. And as she's drawing it, it's gonna become more like three dimensional. And she's gonna take it. And then she's gonna look. 
You just see her kind of like calculate. <laughs> God. Yeah. Okay. And. And how far did you say out it was? It's uh, it would be close enough for him to hit with his bow, so it's gonna be within a hundred to a hundred. Okay. She's gonna expend a sorcery point. Okay. To make this a distance spell. Therefore, it's going to double the uh, double the range of this. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna cast a level one catapult. Okay. Is do you have to roll for an attack on that or? I believe so. Okay. Are you catapulting the drawing? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> it's gonna catapult the drawing. Oh no! Excuse me. It's a dex save. For the dragon. Okay. Yes. One moment. Oh, oh excuse. Me. Yes. I didn't have to use the sorcery point. Shit, I should have read this spell. So it's, what's the range on it? A straight line up to 90 feet in a direction. 90 feet? It's, yeah, it's about 100 feet out. Okay, so I'll still use the sorcery okay. point then. All right, so dexterity save? Yes. That is an 18. Spell save. It'll still, I guess it still takes. It'll take half damage? Yeah. Like... Roll, roll me, roll the me that. Adequate... As uh, she does that, and I look at this drawing, it'll face you and throw it over. Right. Um, <laughs> just like, <laughs> that's a thing that happened. Grab another That arrow. happened. Yeah, I'm gonna actually gonna attack as well with okay. my bow, okay. too. Roll me, roll me to attack Jeremiah. And roll me to attack Tarsius. Oh, and also I'm gonna use a superiority die on Tarsius. Oh, so, so I get a D eight to add to the eight damage. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. to the damage. Yes, okay. I'm gonna be like, Commander Strike. I'm That's gonna Tarsius, total. maybe a little I higher. <laughs> it was sixteen. Oh, right. It's a... <laughs> uh, that might still miss. That's an eighteen to hit. That will be a miss. I miss the days of the great bow. Oh no, you um, you're strength. you're gonna no, you're gonna attack, and then the superiority die is my commander strike is another attack on you. So I get another so attack. So you're you're rolling two attacks basically. First attacks a miss, and then okay. when she tells me to aim higher, <laughs> all right. Slowly adjust it up like a few degrees. As you see, you just kind of like reach up and just like very gently like take your <laughs> giant <laughs> hand and just push it up just a little bit. That and is a oh, 25. That hits. Yeah, mine's a 26. Not is there any specific actually. spot that you're aiming for? Just out of uh, just chest. For... Uh, biggest part. That's just the bear. Base over. of one of the wings. You're aiming for one of the wings? Yeah. Okay. So is... And what is the drawing doing? I just have to ask. It's, it's just got its, like, teeth shown. <laughs> I she gained like, very, bang, bang. very sharp teeth. I can see that. <laughs> She worked really hard on that. Uh, what did you get for... Uh, what was the attacks? On Cordelia is a natural 20. Oh, fucking are you serious? I rolled bad. Yeah, roll me to confirm that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kills dragon, instant uh, Jesus it's Christ. A, a Cordelia is too fucking powerful. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, <laughs> basically, um, Jesus, when you hit... Mm -hmm. Because you hit the attack, you... There's gonna be a... Uh, is it me that's rolling, or is it you rolling? Because I'm actually not sure. Uh, I don't for the superiority dice. I don't think it matters. I rolled an extra d8. Uh, okay, if so, you if you did, then go ahead. Uh, we can we can change it to whatever we want. If you want to roll them, please. It's third class. Uh, uh it's already rolled. Go, go ahead, because okay. I'm not sure. I so I'll I have plus bit. two dex. I rolled the two, and then my superiority dice was a two. That is six points of piercing damage from a non magical bow. Six. Okay. Cannot believe I rolled two twos. <laughs> and uh, mine is a twelve piercing, and it's also a non magical bow. <laughs> okay. Numbers down, and I'm gonna have to write more numbers. Keeping track of ammunition sucks. I have eighty 
arrows. I have yeah, the ammunition 77 sucks. 77 arrows now. Okay. As you all start to collectively shoot at this dragon, patience launching this uh, caricature uh, at its wings as it latches on with its sharp teeth, uh, it kind of causes the dragon to just kind of like bank slightly uh, to the right, giving you an opening, Tarsius, for your arrows to your arrow to pierce into the into the dragon's chest. And Cordelia, was there anywhere specific you were aiming, or? Uh, it's kind of like that with the chest, I guess. All right. Yes. Yeah, so two twin arrows just hitting almost simultaneously in the same spots for the chest, causing the dragon to just let out this angry roar as it quickly turns around. I made it mad. And like, she's just gonna smile. <laughs> and... uh, yeah, with that too, I'm gonna stow my bow and get ready with my as as his uncle as her uncle called it, corpier. <laughs> Basically, my rapier. And she said, well, so "Well, I guess we got our dragon's attention." <laughs> uh, is so the dragon's coming towards us now? Yes. Uh, is it look like it's fast? Like, do I have time to just put my bow back, or is it do I have to drop my bow? You you would have time to put your bow back. Is it swinging back around? It's only a hundred feet out, but it's it's coming back. As I have my bow, my axe ready, okay. I'm getting really excited, and then I stop to look at my sister on my shoulder, and then I'm gonna look to the the guy in full plate armor with a symbol that I know. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't we be trying to, I don't know, make people not get hurt? I'm looking directly at Alistair. We need to take care of the dragon, bro. That's right. how people don't get hurt. Fuck it. And, uh, and then I <laughs> look at Cordelia and put my mouth there. I, and yeah, there's <laughs> Cordelia's Whoa. face when you look at her a little disappointed. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, step forward like 40 feet, and I'm just uh, yeah, gonna I'll, hold an oh. action. Yeah, uh, Alistair, Alistair's gonna have his sword, and he's gonna act like a batter for the, when this thing comes up. Okay. <laughs> Complete yeah. bat stand. I'm gonna go to or basically just right next to Tarsius. I'm gonna get off the shoulder. Because <laughs> it's battle time. It's battle time. Dragon approaching fast. Yeah. I will roll its attacks, and as I do that, I'm gonna ask Ophelia, Yuli, what are you guys doing amidst uh, seeing the smoke starting to rise from your end of the city? Um, Ophelia would have probably made it to where Yuli was, I guess, training. Right. After she, like, sat down the fountain and then heard the sound, or probably would have stopped heard... him for a little bit, too. Anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, she as soon as she heard the sound... She's going towards Yuli and making that like, whoo, whoo, it's a dragon. <laughs> like, remember that one time? <laughs> Stage of Okay. And she's gonna. Does she know? Because I feel like she's a little more wiser now. Would she know where <laughs> Remy lives? Where Remy lives? Yeah, Remilia. Yes. Yeah, she would be within the castle, actually. Okay. Which you would have you would have visited her her place a number of times since being in here in the city for those months. Actually, yeah, I think she's. I'm going she's to. She's gonna need... drag Yuli to where she knows Bromelia is. Mm-hmm. Because she's concerned because she has them. Okay. So that's gonna be an interesting thing. So. I'm gonna need uh, Tarsius. I need you to make me a uh, a wisdom saving. Oh, I'm really good at those. Plus two. Twenty two. Ten o'clock. Congrats. You're on fire. Congratulations. <laughs> you are not going to be frightened by this boy. Okay, good. Because I think I that I would pee myself. <laughs> oh. And let me see. Oh, I forgot one. 
Man, fighters should have. I don't get. I don't get scared ability. Half these. I mean, I get scared correct. Ability. Half these are fucking beast. Colossal dragon. Eh. Okay, so the first uh, first two attacks are going to you, uh, Tarsius, and the last one will be going to Alice. So let me add up first. Okay. Why ignore the kid? <laughs> Honestly, he's a giant dragon, and you're like a little ant. I'm a flea. You're like a flea. How big is the uh, dragon uh, size-wise? Size-wise, he is huge. I cannot push him, then. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> uh, I will fail. By I have uh, ability. I can push giants. He is of a, <laughs> he's of a challenge rating where I need to use my calculator for things. Shit. Okay, does a 21 hit? Yeah. Okay, let me get the other one. So that means this number's only gonna hit. AC so 31 will hit. 16. Okay. Yeah, that one does hit. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> 21, 31, so those two attacks. And then Alistair, you are getting uh, 26. Which I'm gonna. Yes. Okay, so 26 hits. Okay. All right, so let me roll damage. Does a thirty hit? I don't know, Dean. What you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Does a forty-five when you, hit? When you, I like when you would do that with Grace and be like, "Does a twelve hit?" Yes, yes, it does. I like how at the end of the can at, at, at the end, I was just like, "I'm gonna assume this hits if it's a ten or a higher." If it's a double digit, it hits. Yes. <laughs> That's a, couldn't tell if that was a seven or a one. Uh, one, please. It's it's a one. <laughs> it's on it's on my Jasper dice, so it's like hard for me to read numbers sometimes. Yeah, I understand. Uh, <laughs> one, would, please. Would dra I like I I think my boy is pretty healthy, but it's a dragon, so uh, please the low numbers. <laughs> I wish I get my D twelve out for some damage. Eh? So that's gonna be thirty seven uh points of piercing. Oh, that's fire. Sorry. The oh, shit. Sorry. God damn. That's fine. And that's eight points of fire damage. Okay, that's a uh, total, right? Eight, and then thirty-seven. Yes. And then let me roll. Bloodied. I am actually Wait. twenty points past bloody. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, and then. Do, do. Let me roll for Alistair's damage. And Alistair, you were taking 12 points of splashing damage. As this dragon comes swooping in, it opens its jaws as it just kind of like bites into you, Tarsius. Uh, gives you like a rough shake almost, as it then turns and slices at Alistair's, uh, with these long, like, these long talons, before it just takes off again. Uh, you didn't answer my question, you big red snake! Angry. <laughs> Alright, uh, as the puncture wounds hit my chest and there's blood flooring down, uh, my fur, I'm just looking very excited. You know I shouldn't be. And as it, in the middle of its flight, as it takes off, like, flying overhead of you, you hear this metallic kind of thrum, this reverberation, as you see uh, a few of the, you see on uh, one of the guard towers at the docks, a, uh, one of the guards load up a ballista as it fires into uh, the dragon's wing. And you see, like... Roll me a perception, actually. Okay. Everybody? Question. Everybody at the docks, yes. Yeah, I have a question. What's up? It hit me, right? Yeah. And then he went up? And then he went up. Gives that an attack of opportunity? Sure. Fuck you. Let's roll with that. Holy yeah, crap. if anybody wants to roll an attack of opportunity on that, go for oh, it. Oh, cool. I'll... Can I... Can I throw my boomerang? Uh, yeah, if you want. I think you uh, said that was eight. for perception. Good lord. I think you said eighteen misses, right? 
18 misses. Yeah, okay, so I got an 18. Okay. Holy crap. <laughs> what you get? Dirty 20 for the boomerang. That hits, roll me damage. And 7 for This um, is gonna be the dinkiest amount of damage. Tiny little boomerang just goes, Wink. My first. <laughs> she maxed. Perception is seven. <laughs> yes. What is this? My uh, perception is twenty-two. Okay. And my attack of opportunity is a twenty-four. <laughs> Roll me damage on that, because I will be adding those numbers together. All right. And Alistair, did you roll perception? Oh, I cannot hear you. You are muted. Alistair got a 17 on his perception, and his okay. attack of opportunity was 21. Okay, that hits, so you can roll me damage on that. Uh, my damage yes. is 14. Okay. I have two types of damage. Do you need to be okay. needed separate? What's uh, what's the type? Piercing and thunder. Oh, you're a pally. No, you're a fighter. Yep. It's my sword. Sword is fine. It's a it's a special special sword. It's, 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 a, special a, sword. it's a vibrating this, thunderous sword. For <laughs> the sake, for the okay, for the sake of this fight, uh, don't don't yeah, you don't have to separate damage type for that sword. Okay. So that was fourteen total. Okay. Alistair also got a fourteen. Okay. Patience got a seven. Good job, patience. She threw her boomerang at it. All right, as you <laughs> all take bad. your swings at it, uh, try, trying to right yourself uh, after that, uh, after the dragon just kind of like swoops down low to take a few snaps at you, and you see it fly off towards this small uh, uh, private beach. You see uh, one of the guards load up a ballista, and as it fires, you see... The, the the large javelin sized arrow shoot towards the wing and as it does you see these two uh from the arrow's head these wires just kind of like flare out almost as it pierces through the wing and you see it tear Ooh, nice. and when it does the dragon you, you immediately see it lose its equilibrium as one wing just kind of like falls through now with like this gaping hole in it and it just lands hard on the beach. Okay. So, what do we do? Uh, as I'm gonna put my axe on the ground and take a second, as I'm leaving, seeing all this blood like leave my body, this is the first time that's ever happened to me. Um, I'm gonna look at Cordelia, and then I'm gonna look at this child who threw a boomerang at a dragon and hit the dragon, and I didn't. Caught it so right in the I eye. Walk <laughs> forward towards where the dragon is with the axe on my back. I'm fumbling, I'm fumbling around my bag, and I go like, brother, you're bleeding, and then I'll give you a potion. Right. Grabbing it without saying a word and drinking it, and then just throwing um, the vial to the ground. My only greater potion. Fuck, are you serious? Your... Yeah. <laughs> As you're walking, I was gonna heal him, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. As Tarsius is walking, you're gonna see a little uh, the little tiefling girl skip up past you. I gotta go get my boomerang. Uh, he's not gonna say anything. Uh, I, yeah, I don't really know who these two people are. Basically, so I'm more concentrating on my brother bleeding. <laughs> Shit. Alistair's going to keep the crowds away, Quick saying question. everything's A-OK, -okay, and he's also going to uh, keep an eye out for any of the other guards that are coming up. That's a lot okay. of ones. Quick question. Yes. How long would it take us to walk over to where the dragon fell? It's only going to take you a few minutes. Damn. As... Yes. Because I was going to have her use her feet as they would be walking. Okay. Usually people use feet when they walk. That's correct. F-E-A-T, feet. Inspiring leader. As you, uh... <laughs> that was, that was Adipus there coming out, sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong campaign list. <line. laughs> <laughs> no, um, because I was going to say, as they would be, like, walking to the beach, like, 
pa Patience would just look over at Tarsius and Cordelia, just kind of like, you know what you did back there was really cool, just like, you know, basically kind of akin to like to inspire them. Maybe you can get a good hit next time looking at Tarsius. <laughs> just... Oh. She's not doing it to be mean. Are just, you? Just trying wow. to. Wow. <laughs> okay. okay, so as, you, uh, as you're quickly rushing over to the beach, uh, Alistair, you seen uh, the guardsmen start to uh, rush also to the beach, uh, grabbing their longbows. Uh, uh, as you see, uh, one one particular guardsman, um, one that you uh, have, you know that your mentor is acquainted with, um, a Sir Colin Callahan. As you see, this older gentleman with short cropped brown hair, kind of dusty grays on the side as he uh, is limping over with a long sword in hand as he's uh, barking out orders uh, to his guardsmen. Uh, and at that time, your uh, brother in arms, uh, Jayon, runs up behind you. Mm. She's like, how the fuck did a bloody dragon get in the city? Uh, I think he flew. Damn it! Good job! <laughs> That's what I would have said, too. <laughs> Wait, is that like we he, we see this and we heard all of it? Yeah. That? So Jayon, okay. uh, so yeah, okay. Cordelia, Tarsius, Patience, you see this um, shorter than Alistair. Uh, he he's probably a uh, how tall are you, uh, Cordelia? Five four. Five four. Okay, so he's probably <laughs> about a good three to four inches taller than you. Oh. Um, kind lean but muscly, as he has this long, uh, kind of luscious, uh, blonde hair that just falls down in waves and he has kind of cinched into a low ponytail as he's wearing the same armor uh, as Alistair and also carrying a long sword. So he also uh, carrying the symbol of the Order of the Holy Brethren. Yeah, it flew, duh. As he just kind of as he kind of just looks to you, uh, Alistair just kind of takes a, takes a few seconds to intake your obvious answer. Okay, so which one of us is doing the paperwork for this one? And which one of us is telling you, Sarah? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, whichever one you like to do, I guess. Great, so you can do both for me. And he just kind of, like, pats you on the shoulder, shoulders his sword, and just walks into the onto the beach. That is his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> She's just gonna kind of, like, look. Yeah, I was gonna be, uh... <laughs> part of many of Chattington's meetings. I'm gonna, as that person is walking by, um, I'm just gonna look towards him and uh, just, as much as I can, just exhale so he feels the steam from my nostrils. Dang. Are you, are you trying to intimidate him? Fuck it, yeah, dude. Plus four. Sorry, there's a bug on my boat. Cool, natural one. So that's oh, five. No. So it's not broken. <laughs> so just kind of like looks at you, you like literally just expel snot from your nose. <laughs> Ew. I'm gonna look at him. Keeps walking. That was intentional. <laughs> yeah. Do, do I do that child? I don't know, but I'm gonna need y'all to roll me initiative if you're fighting this dragon. Yep. It's yep. A dragon. All right, you've been rolling kind and, of. Uh, I can Ophelia uh, and Yuli, you can all. You're also <laughs> in the initiative order, so that we can go back and forth with you, because I've got things for you to do. Holy shit! Can we just roll this together? Sure. Uh, no, it's patient. We walk down the beach. I know what she'll say to Jayon. She'll just look at him and just be like, "I got the teeth right." Not like he knows what the hell that means. <laughs> Kate, when I can't grab the. So who got above the twenty? Me. Oh. Please, I'm trying to get everybody on the thing. She's rolling Having really good tonight. Out of time. I got I these little pink, they're like little pink fairy dice that I'm using for her. I didn't it's get Uncle Carabao's in, uh, initiative. <laughs> oh no. No, oh, it's still good. Just so you know, even after the potion, I am still bloodied. Oh no. Goodness. 
Alistair will help you out, bro. If he sees that you're hurt, he'll help you out. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm nope. practically shirtless with just leather straps around my chest to keep my bow and my uh, axe. Yes. I guess, again, it would be just, I guess, a question uh, upon you. Like, mm -hmm. would I be able to have used my feet? What's your feet? You spend 10 minutes aspiring your companion, shoring up their will to fight. It would have been under 10 minutes to get you to the beach. Yeah. Oh. Jesus, guys. Oh, good. The dragon rolls really low. Cool. Yeah, that's why. Really? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let me just put him. Put him on the board. What? Then <clears throat> I did board. The audacity. The audacity. Wait. That's why. Hmm. He's on the map. Lair Thought I clicked check. him. Flare check! <laughs> I thought I added a map. It was... Silly guys. Silly guys. Anyway. Let me just, uh... Put that guy there. Um, other guys. <laughs> Guess I'll just be uh, walking towards the crowd and just pushing people to the side. And uh, if someone bumps into me accidentally, I'll be like, oh, excuse me, sorry. Excuse. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No problem. Oh, sorry, little bro. Oh, I'll pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who got 20 up? Me. What'd you get? 22. 22 for patience. Anybody got above that or around that? No, I got dirty 20. Okay, so Cordelia with a dirty 20. Uh, 15 up. Uh, 15. <coughs> oh, uh, what was that one more time? The fishes got 15. Fishes for 15. Tarsus Evan. Oh no, you go after the dragon. Bring it. <laughs> Although it might not be close enough to bring it. Pen, Alistair, what did you get? Got a four. Cool. Okay. <laughs> he's he's assisting and helping people. Okay. As as you uh every now and then as you guys are trying to hustle over to the beach, you see Alistair just kind of stop uh momentarily direct traffic like uh, excuse me go that way uh dragons over here please make sure to avoid uh road is closed please take this detour that way um, yep. Please 100%. seek sanctuary within uh, guard guard houses and and uh, and and temples, please. As let us begin this initiative. Excite. That's that's a good word. Excite. Ooh. It's a reptilian noise. Reptilian noises. I don't find the music I wanted to hear. I think there's a dragon, guys. Guys, there's a dragon. So there's, there's, a, there's a dragon about. So, beginning at top of the round. Patience. E. 
as the dragon is picking itself out of the sand, and you see it kind of, like, extend its wing around to inspect the damage as it just gives this angry hiss. And it looks to all of you. DM, what do you I don't do? see the initiative order. Like, it's just a black screen on my end. Oh, yeah. hold on, please. Sorry. Okay. That makes That's sense. Right. That's what I needed to do. <laughs> yeah. Like a whole ding-dong. There we go. Oh, shh. Okay, cool. I have no control of Oh, no duh. Oh yeah, same. I wonder why that is. Maybe uh, because I didn't do the things I was supposed to do. That's a ship. Patient. Okay. Here we go. You didn't use that other artwork for Colin? Darn. Which one? <laughs> Does it involve a peen? <laughs> Cause yeah, darn. <laughs> how dare I? Yeah. How dare or, or I not the use... on one? How Jeez. dare I not use the zesty art? <laughs> facts, dude. Facts. Man, I could have been pulling more views with that. Yeah, we um... got all the views and all the demonetization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you should troll? All right. Here. Yeah. Patience. Um, what are we doing? She's gonna move. Funny. Dirty. All right. Yeah. Just kind of stomp up. Just all angry. Mm -hmm. Just looking up. You didn't answer my question. In draconic, she's doing it. Oh, okay. This is what language Tarsius did not learn in this specific campaign. Draconic. Does make sense? Yeah, I've learned it. I don't have that language either. Me neither. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh no, guys. Oh goodness. She's the only one who knows. Makes sense. Before... I mean, hey, that's good. Yeah. I mean, before we all, everyone, all pretty much everyone knows your. Everybody now. had your product now. Reasons why you <laughs> choose is like that's not fair. <laughs> Some of us should not know yeah. everything. Why don't I have? So that's what you're asking the dragon? Yeah. So you just see a little girl just go up to a dragon. You see anymore. this eight-year-old little tiefling girl in a dirty green dress, messy, uh, messy red curls, as she stomps up on her little hooves in the sand to this dragon, standing a good 10 feet, 10, 15 feet away from it. She just puts her hands on her hips and demands to know why she doesn't have Mm -hmm. To which the dragon looks, <laughs> kind of snakes his head down to your level, uh, as you ask why to have wings, and it's saying this in Draconic, so. Mm -hmm. Because you are not worthy of them. Strike two! Burn. <laughs> As she will say, that's a strike two. Uh, okay, what what are you doing, Patience? Do, little girl. What, what is she doing? doing? Not them yet. She will do a poison. Okay, and is that a saving throw for Con the dragon? Save. Con save for the dragon. 16. Okay. Sixteen. Is it twenty? That doesn't hit. Okay, and doesn't take half damage or anything. No. Okay. And so poison spray, it's just a spray that you just shoot out from your hands. Mm -hmm. One side as order. you see, uh, as, as you see uh, patients kind of like clasp her hands together as this sickly green uh, smoke starts to trail from her fingers and she shoots it forward in a blast 
and you see it completely cover the dragon's face, and in just like one single exhale, the dragon just <sighs> blows it away. Unaffected. Just looks mad. <laughs> No, that's not how that's supposed to go. Okay. Uh, that's all she's gonna do. That's all I gotta do? Okay. Cordelia, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to move 30 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right here. <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. Um, booping right in there. Booping right um, in there. Okay. Oh, wait. I totally forgot I was gonna, I was supposed to do something else. Uh oh. What are you supposed to do? Uh, what was that? I am going to use another superiority die on a turn. Okay. Die, a creature you can see or hear. A friendly creature. Okay, so um, I'm going to use my bonus action superiority die. And I, I kind of pre-rolled with that and rolled an 8. I'm doing rally. Brother. Okay. I was like, brother. Uh, just be careful next time and don't get hit. Um, you get... <laughs> 11 HP temp. Oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be okay, like, okay. You okay, okay. Uh, what are you uh, doing? Uh, then I'm gonna immediately just boop in there and I am gonna uh, use my action to do something that I can do. I'm All a right. fighter and cast a spell. <laughs> Yep, what's your cast what, spells? Wow! What? I've totally never heard of those. What's I'm up? Shocked. Uh, this is probably not gonna work anyway. I'm using suggestion. <laughs> On the big bad dragon. <laughs> oh, wisdom saving throw. Wisdom uh, saving throw for the dragon? Yes. Uh, Damn everybody in chat. You know. Oh, thank you, you Nick. You, you know what the save is? Oh, yeah. The, the save is a wisdom of 11. <laughs> the, gonna, the save is 11. I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to tell the dragon to just sit there and don't attack. As a few a few snakes comes out of my head. Just... <laughs> so you said the wisdom save is 11? Yeah. He it's rolled a, roll. a 10. Oh my god! <laughs> he didn't roll a 10 on the d20. He rolled 10. Total. He rolled a 3. 10 total. That's it worked. plus 7. Oh my god. <laughs> girl. Oh, girl. Yeah. So, uh, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I was like, you sit there and don't attack. So, so, all right. What what is it specifically you're doing? Uh, suggestion. Suggestion. Okay. Okay. One moment. But the thing is, if somebody attacks it, Alistair, <laughs> you have advantage too. As it's going to, yeah. as you see, its back legs start to kind of bend as it's going to sit on its haunches it stops itself and it just immediately writes itself and it's going to use its legendary resistance <laughs> of course well at least i i made a use one <laughs> whoops uh put my shield in front of me and end my turn do not command me <laughs> put my shield in front of me and end my turn <laughs> i have a little small buckler all so right <laughs> Oh, wait, it it's like, whoops! It, it, oh, it, no. it chose to succeed. Oh no. That's yeah. what it does. <laughs> Two more. Okay, so now next on the initiative, it's going to be Ophelia and Yuli. So, for y'all, this. As you two make your way to, uh, to Lady Romalia's uh, home in uh, Waterdeep. Uh, from what you last remember, she had um, been taking residence within the uh, within the castle itself in order to 
uh, keep guard against any other uh, attacks against the cult. It, you know, with the growing paranoia of losing her husband from an assassin at one point, she was uh, graciously given room within Castle Waterdeep. So heading immediately there, um, you find a lady uh, Guinevere on the steps as she runs, rushes up to you immediately. Just like, oh, thank goodness you're here. I'm so glad you're safe. Quickly, let's let's get inside. Uh, I'm sure the paladins and whoever is going to take care of this. As she... Say what? They're going. Okay, so going into the... Um... So going inside. Get this ready. And whenever she's going inside, she's gonna ask her mom, "Is is Remy here? Is she okay? Is every is, are there enough guards guarding the the estate?" She um yes um, last I heard from her, she was. She she was safe here. Have, have you seen her in the last few the dragon? Allow me to do this map. Oop. I did not have the music prepared for this one. That's awkward. Ta -da 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 -da. Ta -da -da -da. I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna keep the battle music going so it's consistent. Hey, it works. Yeah, yeah. As uh, you walk in uh, through the through the main hall, you see Lady Romalia uh, before you. And with her, uh, are these, um, men clad in black, uh, leathers resembling, uh, the visage of dragons. As one of them has her very, uh, forcibly by the arm with a sword under her throat. Holy. As they all kind of stop and, uh, look at you as, uh, the main, uh, the, the one holding Lady Romalia just kind of tilts his head just like oh well this is awkward yes indeed oh. sacred flame at the one holding oh the <laughs> no i was going to have some witty words but all right yeah. nope, <laughs> fucking <laughs> what's he's having non flashbacks i do not want to <laughs> Bro, is, did you use the website to make this map uh i used roll 20 to make this map oh okay Props. Yeah, as she's gonna take her flame, and it's like whenever she's doing it, she's gonna like signal Yoli to get Romalia out, like to grab her. Okay, she knows one how this moment. Ends, it's not nice. Okay, this is the one. It's just immediately fireworks. <laughs> All right, so let me make so this deck save. About my big villain speech, fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> as he was about to, you, Oph Ophelia, you see, he's about to say more as. as you know, this is what they always do. They have words to say. They try to make de they try to broker deals, which is absolutely nonsense in this case. And uh, his deck save was a that's an eleven. So what's his damage? Is <laughs> let me start writing his damage. What's 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 your damage? <laughs> As chat says, excuse me, ma'am, I was monologuing. <laughs> I was in the middle of in ten. Oh, Ophelia, yeah. you have advantage. Oh yeah, Ophelia Ooh. just got out nice. of bed. Nice. So he takes ten solid points of damage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Show me. Let's Literally, Ophelia, the second, let's the the second you walk in, you see the scene before you of these cultists <laughs> holding your mother's friend at at sword point. And Ophelia, you just immediately, in muscle memory, just unclip earrings as quickly as you can, and Sacred Flame. <laughs> Bitch, hold my heels! <laughs> I love it. Hold my room. Hold this, as you just kind of toss him to Yuli. Does it on the just floor. Kinda, yeah, it just drops him on the floor. But, um... Alright, as not he... an excuse not to attack. Right, <laughs> Ophelia never needs an excuse. <laughs> There's only one way she wants to be perceived, and that is as a threat. So, 
as oh, you immediately shoot forward uh, this uh, radiant white fire as it catches onto his, onto his leathers. And he looks like he was about to say more, but it catches in his throat as he starts to scream in, in alarm, immediately letting go of Romalia's uh, arm in the process. And is there a bonus action, or I'm gonna put these uh, guys immediately after you for sake of oh, ease? Oh, who's there? A bonus? Just so you know, because it's a new map, we only see them. Okay, I understood. I don't know if I uh, control you to add Ophelia. Yeah, you can. All right, cool. All right, as a bonus action. If she can, like, really quickly, she'll, oh, she always has a perk with her. So she's going to take her Triton out real quick and do Divine Favor on it. She's going to okay. spear some people in a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all right. And after that, it'll be Yuli, and then they're going to have their turn. Let me add. Oh. BRB. Okay. I assume he has his halberd out because yeah he he would have his halberd with him you just grabbed him from training so he's still donned in his armor and and all that All right. Oh, I don't think he has. Let me grab that real quick. Sorry. All right. So there, you should have control of them. Oh, feel it. There we are. So you should have control of Yuli. Uh, you said he was moving forward. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he uh, did move forward. Okay. And he'll be in front of her. All right, so he's going to be... Uh, so his action is to guard her? Anything else that he's doing, or is he just guarding? That was here. Stop! Yeah. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, that was its action to move, bonus action to move, uh, get closer and to move back. And since he has extra attack, could I use that as a regular attack? Since so I think extra attack goes with your uh, attack action, is what it does. Okay. Then he's just gonna be in front of her, like, just so just so just standing guard in front of her defensively. Yeah. 
So was he? But he did would he... have dragged her. Oh, he would have moved her. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like he went oh. all the way, like twenty feet to get her, and then grab her and move back. And... Okay. Another five so for her as he behind. does, uh, gra- uh, kind of halberd in hand, as he's ready to defend, uh, reaching out uh, with uh, with his non dominant hand to grab hold of Lady Romalia and uh, step her closer. And um, as he does that, make me a perception. Yo- Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. As you, as he takes uh, her by the arm, uh, his uh, as as his hand starts to close around her uh, around her arm, he sees for a moment that it his fingers kind of like almost pass through, but he's still holding on to her. There's still a solid grip underneath. That almost as if it's kind of like an illusion on top. And as he moves her back, uh, she looks at him and... Oh, I'm so sorry. I think this is the part where it's going to get a little bit awkward. And immediately an illusion just kind of fades away. And instead of Lady Rima, he moves... Wait a minute. You put plot twists in the telenovela episode two? Uh, yeah. As uh, your friend uh, Tabin now stands in her place, as Daddy, no! I heard a squeal. And I'm like, <laughs> Daddy, oh <my> no. <laughs> the board right after Julie. Clap. Give it. When to make his attack. That's plus verse. Yeah. Okay. As a uh, kind of in this fluid, uh, rehearsed movement he takes uh this rapier that was on his belt as he kind of pivots on a heel and just strikes it forward uh stabbing in between uh the uh the joints of armor on uh on the cultist in front of him and that's three four damn it panics as i grab dice you're panicking or they're panicking? I'm I'm panicking because I'm like, oh shit, I need dice. We have a whole plethora of them up there. I know. Uh, oh, what did I do? Okay, never mind. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Okay, that'll be his turn. As now is. Now it is the cultist's turn, as Dragonfang is gonna... Oh, that's level one. What? Oh, no, I... It was level one ability for a fighter. I thought I didn't write it down, but I did write it down. That's all. Oops. Sorry. It's like, where's my second one? There it is. <coughs> And this guy is going to see, he is going to, uh, Ophelia, you see as the air around him kind of ripples, causing the black cloak on his back kind of, uh, kind of move like wings almost as he takes, as he lifts off the ground and immediately just flies back. Right there. Just what an opportunity. Oh. 
Okay. Numbers. Okay. As immediately they start to move in. Oh no. As Ophelia, one is going to, with a hand crossbow, take aim. Yes. And 20 to hit? Yeah. Okay. Let me roll damage for that. So that is going to be seven points of piercing damage as one of them pulls a hand crossbow out from um, uh, from their hip and just takes aims and fires as the bolt uh, catches you in the side. Which one was it, by the way? This one right here, the one that has a clear shot of you. This guy. Okay, the one to the right. Yes. As for the two guys, are going to attack their scimitars. Do not hit. As Yuli is going to take, I believe, one attack. 22 to hit? Yeah. Okay. As this cultist draws his scimitar, and you see him just kind of like glide it across his palm, and it immediately just ignites with fire as he takes a swing. So, so that's eight points of slashing damage, and then five points of fire damage. Okay. So, moving on from there. Back at the beach. Next, it is the guard's turn. Well, it is Colin's turn. Colin. Don't get in my way. And as he immediately, uh, to his guards, uh, giving the order of... Those that can keep your distance, keep your distance. Take take aim at the wings and the eye and the limbs. Like well, he's he's sounds smarter than me. As he gives command and he's going to just kind of heft his longsword as he goes in for his attack. He rolled a fucking crit. Good. His yeah. first roll ever and he rolled a crit. <laughs> Is that a crit? Uh, Sir Colin did. Nice. Holy fuck. God damn it. Sir Colin. He fucking did that. I expect nothing less of him, to be honest. <laughs> First attack for a crit. Miss. Yes. Okay. That was a roll for crit. So. Remember. I forgot I need to add all this damage together. How hefty are you?
Let me add up all that damage y'all did to that dragon. Red time. Oh. Y'all did a collective of counting Sir Collins 83 damage to this dragon so far. Cool. Is it bloody yet? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, great. Not yet. But hey, you did you did a considerable amount of damage to this big boy. I saw more than 160 HP. Ow. 30. Nope, that's not the right way. <laughs> Do that. They all kind of take their positions. Surround the dragon. Surround the dragon. Knock their bows uh, as they all have uh, their long bows with them. Hit the dragon's ass. Three. Are they doing good or bad? Oh, that's that one probably hits. Oh, okay, that answers my question. <laughs> <laughs> one out of two hit. One out of ten. Five. One, two, two out of ten. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Gosh, one out of darn ten. It. Ten out of ten. Gosh darn these city guards. It's a grounded dragon. Hit it! Fucking city guards. <laughs> God, did they hire stormtroopers? <laughs> no, probably. The big question is the one who goes after the guards. Let's see if he can hit. <laughs> You really got She something. doesn't like him already. Yeah. Is, it, is is there I'm just some, going by first impressions of what this child saw already. Is it is is it a is it a patience thing or is it a Tabitha thing? It's a patience thing, honestly. Because I think you, you have a thing against uh, against uh blonde elves. I've noticed. I have a thing against another blonde elf. Tabitha does. <laughs> this one patience just doesn't like it. At last I checked Cole wasn't in this game. <laughs> I mean, he also insulted, he kind of like did a, he dunked paperwork onto uh, Alistair and targeted yeah. her dead. It's and like, being it's... around the royal, like, family, like, that's a bitch move, bro. I, you can think that. <laughs> yeah, dumping paperwork on somebody is a bitch move. So as they go, uh, all of them drawing their bows at once, firing. You see some arrows just kind of like glancing off of the armor as two of them manage to hit in between the soft spots. Birds? Okay. It is. Still, still kicking. So next, it is Jayon's turn. Okay, buddy. He is gonna do his thing. Do it. Do some damage. He's gonna do some damage. Oh. He is going to take his bonus action to, uh, as you see him kind of grasp his holy symbol as just kind of like this ethereal uh, shield goes around him as he casts shield of faith on himself. There. Okay, he will take the rest of his 
movement to just push himself all the way up to the dragon so he can, as you see him, just kind of like kick his sword up in the same fashion as Alistair and gets himself right up in front of the dragon, ready to ready to fight it. And now, speaking of that dragon. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Is gonna do two, three. It's gonna make its three attacks. Okay. Totally hit. That is a twenty-six for Jayon. That's a twenty-eight. And leave Cordelia. You closest. Let's see, wait. Yeah, reach. Okay. Did he hit my sister? 26 to yeah. hit. Did he hit my sister? He did. <laughs> so, let, before we get to that, uh, Tarsius. Oh, this Al is going to be Al delicious. G this is going to be delicious. Ooh, fuck it, action surge. <laughs> Valid, dude. As he... I will, let me roll the damage as I describe what is happening. So Cordelia, since you were clearly the universe didn't want me to roll that attack. Because what if my D20s just disappeared into the void as I grabbed it? Yep. What if? So Cordelia. I'm gonna see which one. No, you've been rolling bad. Which one are you rolling? Okay. I'll roll you. So, 14 points of piercing damage, uh, Cordelia, and... Oh, shit. Maxed on those. Uh, 12 points of fire damage. I'm watching this, all my attacks. As the first thing it does is it rears its head back, uh, angrily, as it says, You dare try to command me. Whoops. As it takes a <laughs> bite out of you, and you feel the hot breath just burn at your skin as its teeth uh, like pierces through uh, through you. And right as it lets go, it takes its massive claws rearing up on its hind legs as it takes one swipe at Jayon and then another one at Colin. Let me roll the damage for them. Team for Jayon. Oh, you guys get an 18. The one I was like, ah, 50 damage to the Minotaur. He can take it. Hey, uh, I'm curious about this just because of class features as mm -hmm. well. I was kind of reading here. I don't know What's if up? we talked about it when I was Bird or I, but. What's up? Because action surge over here, it's saying that oh it takes God. no action. Like, you take one additional action, blah, 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 you know, the action surge. Because on second wind, it says you can use your bonus action to regain HP. Mm -hmm. But action surge, it doesn't say anything that if it's a bonus action. That's already trying to put yourself on your own. It's you. So yeah, so you can. Uh, you. I believe that means that you can. Use the you second can, one and bonus and action surge. You can basically use action surge just at will or something like that, like one, without using yes, one without one using bonus. action, yeah, you know, without using action or bonus action. I think so, yeah. Because that's how I'm reading it. That's why I was just mm -hmm. curious. That's what it says. The start okay. of your turn, you can push yourself beyond your normal limits. On All your right. turn, you take an additional action. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. as the dragon, uh, it's. Cordelia's blood dripping from its mouth as you see it slash once into jail, tw uh, twice into Colin, as the sand kicks up around it, and it just uh, turns back around, its head snaking between you all as it's trying to pick what its next target is, Tarsius. 
It's your turn. I'm not, All right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite bloody, but I'm there. Almost. As you <laughs> just hear this, <laughs> this huge bull run. So uh, just so you see my movements, DM thirty feet. Got you. All right. Then you are... I'm going to use yeah. an action to move an additional fifteen feet to Got get you. me there. All right. So now I have flank. And immediately after a dash action, I'm going to use my Goring Rush with an advantage on the hit. After that, I'm going to use Action Surge to attack again. Bet. All right. Uh, <laughs> go, go for your Goring Rush. That is going to be a 21 to hit. That hits. Okay. I need a D6 for this one. That is eight points of piercing damage from my horns. Okay. And then I'm going to use an action surge to attack. Go for it. Yeah. All right. And so as I'm running, I'm going to put my axe onto the sand to give myself the pivot and just like headbutt him with my horns. Since his horns kind of curve backwards, most mm -hmm. of these are just going to be pure headbutts. Um, right. It is piercing damage, but if you want it to be bludgeoning or something, because it is kind of like instead of the horn part. Yeah, that's semantic. Okay. Um, and then attacking with my great axe. And as you see, the silver parts of the axe turn the tips a hint of white. All right. That is a magical axe. Ooh, fancy. And that is not a critical. I'm kind of sad. Aww. But that is 29 to hit. Yes. I oh, almost that hit. definitely hits. Okay. He's a big boy. He hits hard. All righty. That is a 16 damage. 16 damage, okay. <laughs> That's it. That's my turn. That's your turn. Okay. <laughs> As you see, just this massive minotaur come rushing in headbutting into the dragon's rib cages. You see the dragon almost kind of bend with the hit as he just slams into it, using his axe to pivot, using the momentum as he swings his axe around, striking into the dragon. And you see the dragon just kind of buckle under the heavy blow of the hit. And uh, if I may, as for his speech, I'll, yes. after I slam my axe into him and pull it out, the quarrel's with me! And that's it. All right, Alistair, you're up. It's a good boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I, okay. I, okay. I, oh. I, I lost. I got. I'm gone. Hold on. Oh shit. <laughs> uh oh, Alistair just. Alistair's like, okay, this appears. Okay. <laughs> uh, he is going to move 30 feet. Uh, like he's gonna be right behind Jayon, I believe. That'll get up to 30 feet, and then um. He is going to cast uh, uh, Channel Divinity, uh, his sacred weapon. His sacred weapon. Yes, right and then he Jan? just... Yeah, I think that's as far as he can go, is like the 30 feet like right. behind Jan. Um, and then uh, he's just going to uh, get into a like protective stance. Okay. Come on, roll 20. Please get me back in there. Uh, there's a, he can't really reach or anything, but he's he's just going to stay back there and just get prepared. Okay. As you see, uh, your buddy Jayon just kind of uh, holding one hand to uh, a really nasty wound that, uh, that's blooming from his shoulder underneath his armor. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Bro, are you okay? I'm fine. How about you worry about more important things? Uh, uh, you oh, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he'll 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 do his his uh, sacred weapon. And his his uh, great sword will start radiating with light. Okay. It's positive energy. Positive righteous energy. Just righteous energy. I love that. It's positive energy. <laughs> okay, and that's it, Alistair. Uh, uh, would praying be a bonus action or an action? I would say... Okay, what's your prayer? <laughs> what's your prayer? <laughs> He's just gonna pray to Pratt. <laughs> He's just gonna hold on to his holy symbol and be like, Dear Pratt, 
We're in a bit of a pickle right now. <laughs> Dear Brad, that's so good. <laughs> I don't know. There's a page out of that book for future. Oh. <laughs> oh. We're in a bit he of a pickle. Eyes, he, has, he has his eyes like squinted closed too. Like he's super constant. He has his eyes closed in prayer. Oh my god. see a minute or just look over. Uh, okay. dear frat, we're in a bit of a, <laughs> a pickle right now. It would be super righteous if you could help us out. Thank you. Love, Alistair. And then he's just gonna let go! <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Alistair, you pure precious boy. Throw me a religion. <laughs> Oscar. A religion? Okay. Oscar Throw me a religion. <laughs> okay, hold on. Holy shit. Oh, uh... <laughs> Love, Alistair. P.S. I love how he says thank you. <laughs> That's, Thank that, you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Oh. You got a 22. <laughs> As, um... Alright, roll, uh, roll me percentiles. As you made connection with your with your deity. Shame. I imagine as he... He, he makes connection, connection, it's like elevator music as it, he's on hold. <laughs> Uh, 65. Okay. <clears throat> you, um... Alright, as you... <laughs> the most wholesome thing I've heard all day. As, as you pray to your... Uh, to your Lord Frats, um, you feel your... Your grip on your sword become more sure. You feel like you're getting a um, it's it's kind of like when you're in training and you know Sister Sarah's watching. And normally, most for most people that that makes them nervous and obviously they're they're gonna mess up. But for you, it's it's inspiring. It's invigorating, and you 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 feel like you can do this. You, Aww, you've got yeah. the, you feel like you can you can do this. And you, maybe, just maybe, you feel the, the a, a physical pat on the back. I, if I have an amazing idea, I think I'll be able to do three men. Okay. Hold on to your seats, my dudes. Oh, no. Uh oh As, um... Alright, and... Don't worry, I have something in mind, too. The sun also seems to be shining just a little brighter. Yes. <laughs> okay. Patience. You're up to bat. After what the dragon said to her, she's gonna get all mad and just yell at him. I am worthy, you you butt face. <laughs> you butt. butt all face. in draconic, nonetheless. It's just angry child is just yelling in draconic. Um, wow. and she is wow. going to cast um blight. Okay. I'm assuming it's going to succeed this con save because legendary action. I mean, yeah. It's He's gonna, well. he's gonna succeed it. Damage is damaged. Or I'll just roll and see if he'll succeed anyway. What's your DC? 16. Okay. Up, 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 up. Uh... Yeah, that's a 22. So he succeeds. That's fine. I'm still happy with my rolls so far. What'd you get? Shit, you not. Did you max on all of them? No, not all of them. Oh, Holy be shit. Like, oh my god, that's awesome. Holy fuck. Four of them so far have rolled eights. Four out of her five eights have all been maxed. And then one was a one, so hold on. Patience is spiteful. Two. <laughs> Three. What's 41 divided by? 41 divided by 2. Well, so 20. 20. So 21 20. is what he takes, because yeah. I round up. Okay. Um, and then uh, she's going to expel um, two sorcery points mm -hmm. to do a quicken spell. So instead of a casting time of one action, spends two tor sorcery points to change the casting time to a bonus action. Okay. She's going to look over to Tarsius and just be like, you got this, Pace. No. Oh, no. 
<laughs> as you lock eyes with this tiny horned child, uh, Tarsius, and immediately your body, your muscles start to just vibrate with this energy like you just took the biggest shot of espresso you've ever been given in your life. I don't even know what espresso is, but I love it. And she's going to move <laughs> it back. Is the drink that is uh, most commonly uh, consumed by Uncle Chad's wife. Oh. <laughs> That's a good drink. Yeah. Yeah, and she would have moved back too. All right. And that's your turn? Yep, that's her turn. Cordelia, you're up. Yep, I, I thought about this a little bit for RP purposes. Mm -hmm. But my bonus action, I am doing second win. Because uh, as soon as she got hit, basically she's going to ah! She's just going to yell a little bit. And then her hood kind of falls off her head. Oh. So her snakes just comes out. Oh, uh, Alistair, <laughs> you also got another advantage. Alistair has Rolling, such advantage. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so, 13. Healing for 13 HP. Okay, so Alistair, <laughs> uh, the woman, the, the hooded woman next to you, um, as she was bit, you, there's a moment where her hood falls back and you see these, instead of what should be hair, she has these long green snakes that just start coiling around her and hissing. Uh, After Alistair good. finishes this prayer, he's just going to be like, I like your hair, and then to continue. <laughs> 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 oh, well, uh, she's gonna move over here but as soon as uh, when she's moving over there she's gonna go like finger guns thanks <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway I am gonna go do my two attacks alright roll me your attacks two attacks oh, it's important to know he's bloodied Yay! Yay. Nice. Uh, in in response to the finger guns, Alistair's gonna do the uh, the holy symbol, the hang like loose. hands it. Yeah, the hang the hang loose. <laughs> uh, um, first attack is a twenty one. Twenty one Se hits. Second attack. Oh, that's important too. <laughs> Second one is um dirty twenty. That hits as well. Yes. And what's she I doing, will... girl? Roll my damage plus one sneak attack. <laughs> that <laughs> sneak attack, though. <laughs> more than that, d6. Yeah, just one d6. <laughs> so. Plus five. That is, uh, oh wait, I, I didn't do the other dice. 27 total damage. <laughs> 27 total damage. Okay. And then I will do action surge because you know what? Screw you. Screw <laughs> you. Uh, action surge and do one attack. Why just one attack? Because I'm expending my superiority die to make Tarsius attack. <laughs> right now? Tarsius. Yep, one more commander strike. <laughs> what? Your face, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm but it's just angry. one attack, right? Just one attack. Okay. Uh, and then with the superiority die, D8. For your oh, so he gets he gets one attack, and then he's gonna be hasted on his turn. Oh, I think that might miss. That's an eighteen. I think that missed last. That's time, a right? miss, unfortunately. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh well. Um, that do I we still we're... keep the superiority die or no? No. Fuck. All right. Uh, my attack was a twenty-one. Twenty-one. That hits. Yes. You have failed me. As I, <laughs> all right, that's another ten. So fuck that. I'm using this. As I rear back again, and then you just really hear a little bit of a little roaring engine from her sword, just, just like just, this, just mechanical <laughs> roaring noise, just humming to life in this sword. Eleven points of that. Alistair's like, bro, your your sword's purring. <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> Sword go brrr. Sword go brrr. Sword go brrr. 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 Like, I do have multiple, multi eye attacks, so brrr. Brrr. Oh, my. Yes. And that's going to end my turn, right? There. All right. <laughs> so we are Fifi, as I think she's struggling to get back on roll 20. No. Oh, no. Yeah, you can still talk about that. 
I see, I see you buffering. There you are. Okay. Okay. Here, I thought you were playing. It'd be like that. There it is. Ophelia, it is your turn. Um. The map skip the first but, um, she's gonna. Going for the map roll. But while she's preparing her action, just for flavor, she's gonna bend down real quick and just like tear the bottom of her whole dress. <laughs> Too much fabric <laughs> in the way. Okay. <laughs> you just kind of them. rip off the bottom of your skirt. <laughs> Heavens forbid exposing your knees. <laughs> As your mother's just like, Ophelia! Oh, she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I can do it. She's gonna... Go all of her 30. Okay. 30. Yeah. Her Triton range shed's 20 to 60 feet. So, she's gonna attack... The one in front of her, she's gonna like kebab it basically. All right. As you kind of take a running start, uh, javelin style, as you heft your trident. Ooh, okay, I use my advantage. Good, I did. Nineteen to hit. Nineteen hits. Roll me damage. Ten. All right. Okay, bonus action. Uh, no, she's still concentrating. Oh, wait, wait. She's concentrating on her other. Um, she's gonna look at the one to the right that shot her earlier and just like give him like. Next. You're next. As, as he's readying another bolt in his uh, hand crossbow. Four. Yuli, it is your turn. Um, he's going to attack the one next to him. Okay. Uh, Albridge, and then extra attack. First attack. Both of them are 17 to hit. 17 does hit. Eleven total. Eleven total, okay. Okay. And I feel like he'll still look at Tab and be like, this is confusing. Or this th this does make things awkward and just kind of like drops his hand holding him or whatever. <laughs> he was still holding his <laughs> hand. He hasn't by now. <laughs> I love that. Yes, I could say it's a bit awkward. I'm... You could say now, happily married. Oops, I did a bad Alright. As it's... And is that all Yuli's doing for his turn? Yeah. Okay. So moving on to Tabin, as he is going to make his attacks. He is actually going to... He's... Chance to... A rapier... Uh Okay, that just hits. Mm. 
take piercing damage from his rapier. As as he turns to say that to Yuli, he just uh, very expertly, very cleanly just takes another slice through as he's trying to cut through uh, the the one in front of him. So next up is this. Uh, this. Okay, he is to... So, the one that is flying about a good 15 feet up. Alright. Ooh, alright. I do, okay. Okay. As uh, you see him pull out from his cloak this uh, ruby red sphere, as it just crackles with magic, and as he holds it aloft, this fire jumps forth from it and immediately lances towards uh, Tavin since he's the closest one. Oops. Where is his bodyguard? <laughs> <laughs> DM's like, I know what Talk I'm about doing. it. I, uh, you know, he's somewhere. He is. I sent him lacking on, on his duties. I sent him on vacation. This is what happened when bodyguards were in vacation. I believe is a mess. Yes, that is a mess. As he shoots uh, this lance of fire forward as it aims for Tavin. But Tavin just kind of um, ducks around it as it shoots and just hits uh, and burns a spot right next to you, Ophelia, <laughs> on the ground. As Tavin just looks to it and just like, do better next time. If you're going to kill me, please don't insult me while you do it. <laughs> as these guys are going to make their attacks. Sixteen uh for Yuli. Yes. Okay. Roll that. So that's five points of slashing damage with uh five points of fire damage. As he comes in just swinging uh, with the sword, uh, with his uh, flaming scimitar, and for his second attack, that is, that's a twenty. Yeah. Oh wow, he literally rolled a one on that one. So that is four points of slashing damage, and two points of fire damage. One in front, cabin is missed. One two. Side is also going to miss, and the one with the hand crossbow that is a five to miss you, Ophelia. Yeah, that missed. And if it's the same one that struck her last time, she just hung at him. Okay, <laughs> so Ophelia just looks disappointed in him. All right, so moving back to the beach. As Sir Colin is going to make his attacks. Okay, that's it. So that is... Those both hit. Wait. 
Oh, wait. That's 19 points. Dragon total. As uh, Sir Colin just kind of... He kind of clutches the, the wound from the dragon as he just kind of steals himself and just goes for uh, another series of attacks. Dragon is starting to slow down as it just takes more and more damage from all of you. Next, Guardsman. You know, if one of them was where he was supposed to be, I guarantee you there'd be more hits with the longbow. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, so one hit. Miss, miss, and miss. As the guardsmen keep knocking their bows, firing, as only one out of a few just manages to actually catch in the right spot. As this dragon is just thrashing around in the sand, uh, making its attacks. Jan is going to go for his attacks. He is going to... Twenty to hit. That tech's not gonna hit. We will take the twenty and we are going to do a good old divine smite. As Jayon just kind of swinging overhead with his sword, as he kicks it up, uh, one move, uh, taking one slice that misses, but then he kind of like pivots around, and as the second one comes down, you see his sword just glow white hot with radiant energy as it cuts into the dragon. You just hear this uh, this explosive energy that just almost sounds like thunder as he hits into it. Then. Now it's the dragon's turn. Oh boy. Uh oh. Boy. As he is going to make his three attacks. I mean, against that's a natural fucking one. Holy shit. <laughs> Amazing. So, and I believe the team does not hit Jayon. For real, though. But the 20 will. And then the 24 is going to go towards Tarsius for the bite. Okay. Let me roll for his claws.
Why do I keep losing my D10s? What the fuck? So tires. Oh, Tarsius, you got a, a ground talk. Thank you. Trying to... So that's 20 points of piercing damage. Okay. And then 8 points of fire damage. As it had the dragon having a uh, moving to make an attack against Colin, Jayon coming down with his sword as it just explodes with radiant energy, which causes the dragon to turn and take its two attacks then on Jayon. One uh, catching on the blade of his sword while the other one just slices into his armor, uh, catching him with a heavy blow and then immediately whipping around and its head strikes out like a snake as it closes its jaws around you, Tarsius. And you just feel your skin begin to burn with uh, with the fire uh, raging inside of it. As it is now your turn. Okay. Um, You're hasted. You are hasted. I think that <laughs> means I have two attacks. So first attack. Or attack. Or attack. That's a natural 20. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, God, confirm it, that, boy. oh, God. It, you're big. it does not confirm. But because I have a vicious great axe, yep. uh, my my weapon does additional damage. Okay. All so right. that is 2d12s plus, plus 12. Nice. Okay. Okay, so that's the first attack. All right, I got excited and I rolled. All right, second attack. Bro, I'm not shitting you. That's a different dice, and that's another nat 20. <laughs> oh, we to confirm on that one. <laughs> another vicious. Oh, and it confirmed on a 14. So that's another vicious attack. <laughs> Roll me all the damage. So that's plus 24 total 24, on yeah. top of so the dice. 24 <laughs> total plus 4d12. Oh. <laughs> mm. All right, let me... Uh, <laughs> excuse me as I uh, do... Meanwhile, uh, off to the side, you see this little tiny gremlin of a tiefling four, tiptoeing in the sand going, hee <laughs> sure he's excited. Because it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So yeah, so 24. Okay. Okay. 24. 9. 35. 40. 48 points of slashing oh. damage. As just mooing and grunting. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you this, and then I'm going to ask you a question. And that's, um, how would you like to do this? <laughs> how tall Why is this 21? <laughs> it is <laughs> an adult, amazing. so it is huge, so okay. standing well over, As I'd say, 20 I feet tall. Slam the axe right into it, and I just pull down, so moving him almost eight feet towards me as I yeah. grab his neck, and then just grab the end of my ass and just scream <laughs> and cut it off. Okay. As Tarsius lets out this just this monstrous bellow as his axe comes flying down, cleaving into the neck of the dragon, you feel the axe break the bone, shattering through ligaments and, and muscle and tissue as it just tears, not cleanly, but it tears its head off as it falls to the ground. The body just kind of like convulses and spasms as it just kind of falls over in the ground and the sand begins to hiss with steam as the blood begins to touch it. That that pose exactly, that victory pose, he's just going to just scream. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful boy. <laughs> okay, and so for the most part, we will keep in initiative until mm. Ophelia's oh, turn. I my car should have been up. Whoops. Oh, Alistair, what do we do? 
Thank you. Seeing the dragon down. Uh, he is immediately going to go over to Jayon, and he is just going to, like, hold his hands out in, a, in an attempt to, like, do a, 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 like, a lay on hands kind of situation. And he's just going to be like, do I have permission? Ah. Jayon just kind of, like, kind of <laughs> holding himself for the most part. It's kind of like looks you up and down, just like I can heal my damn self, and he just walks off. Oh, oh, all right. Rude. And then he'll he'll just wave as he goes by, I guess. Wish. Uh, he goes. does anyone else need help? And he'll just ask with his hands, like kind of raised up in the air, sort of. Does anybody yeah. else need help? I have hands. He has hands. Hands for helping. He has helping hands. As uh, Cordelia, uh, <laughs> Cordelia, Patience, and uh, Tarsius, you see uh, this uh, young knight uh, still in his hel- in his helmet as he's holding both hands up in the air, <laughs> saying, "I have hands for helping. Does anybody need help?" Two hands. He has two uh, hands for helping. Cord- Cordelia is just gonna kneel down because she's kind of hurt, but. She's not really gonna say anything. I'm gonna go over towards her. No, you okay? You have nothing. She needs hands. And then Alice is gonna hold his hands out as he runs. <laughs> he runs. <laughs> <laughs> hold his hands straight out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he'll. Hold on. He's gonna. He's gonna come right next to her and just be like, "Permission to touch." Uh. Cor- because you're kind of right behind me, uh, like Cordelia's gonna turn and then just immediately see that her hair is out. She's just gonna freak a little bit. Put her, put her hood back on. Your snakes like, you, kind of curling with them. You didn't see that, didn't you? <laughs> uh, the cool hair. Um. Boop. <laughs> oh. No wait, I have, I have to, I have to heal. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> As Cordelia, you just kind of like, kind of, kind of, uh, hop over to the side, uh, on your knees to get away from Alistair. And Alistair, as you're just kneeling down, you just clank, clank, clank over with her. It's like, wait, it's I, very I, I can help. I can help. There, there uh, is she... a, a new reward point in chat, just so you guys know. Awesome. Um, Cordelia's gonna stand up and. Uh, uh, sheath her sword, her rapier, corpier, because of Uncle Cap. <laughs> her corpier. Um, just basically, as a noble woman would do, kind of clean her robe a little bit and just go like this. Fine. Daintily holds her hand out. <laughs> <Daintily reality. laughs> oh, yeah. He he would. Uh, you know what? He would actually kneel on the ground and hold her hand, <laughs> and then so nightly. and then. And then he would do uh, lay on hands, and uh, it would be thirty-five HP. He'll do the full. Wow, that's a yep. lot. <laughs> he just God. empties the whole tank right there. Yep, that, that's yep, all that, he does. That, yep, that still, <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> full okay. HP, right there. Patience. What do we do? Uh, patience is gonna skip up her thirty feet to right here, and just reach up. And pull out her, uh... Her the little boomerang. dinky boomerang that would be kind of wedged between two scales. <laughs> yeah, just... Guess you weren't worthy. Oh! <laughs> and you're gonna see the child also. As this t- child is immediately going over to where the head had fallen, and you see her just trying to work a tooth out of its jaws. So, Cordelia, anything that you're doing in this moment besides being healed? Uh, once I've finished heal, healed, uh, she's gonna feel a little awkward because it was like, what was that? <laughs> like, <laughs> kneeling like this. He's being a gentleman! Also, he's, he's, I think, I, he's, he's a lot taller than her, too, so. Yeah, yeah very much. He, Alistair is six so foot you, three. So you kneeling down is basically like shoulder, my shoulder height. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she's just gonna say, uh, Thanks. 
Anytime, then... fair citizens. <laughs> Good God. Oh, fuck. oh bless when, God. When Al's just dance, <laughs> fucking start reaction, it'll just be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go right next to, um, to my brother, and then try to pull one of the scales. And like, brother, help me with this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get out my dagger when it's my turn, and I'll start taking off scales and teeth and whatever else. See this little child just <laughs> trying to pull out a tooth. <laughs> like, the, like <laughs> okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm taking your wings. <laughs> They're mine now. Patience. Oh no, she's not <laughs> doing that. She's just taking a tooth. Okay. <laughs> that was, uh, uh, short beat said one, two. <laughs> so we move back to Ophelia. Let me all right. So, Ophelia, what are we doing? Wait, what are we doing, girl? Oh, they're muted. Fei Fei! Fei Fei! Fei Fei! I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. What are we doing, girl? Okay, um. Hi, Two to where okay. Julia is, and then she's gonna drop her concentration. Favorite, she's gonna and cast. She's gonna cast, uh, which one? She's dropping concentration on Divine Favor to cast Spirit Guardian. Okay. Casting spirit guardians. It's gonna be a wisdom. Wisdom saving throw, which I assume is for all the guys in that area. Yeah, it's a 15 feet circle. Yep, they fall within that. And our spirit guardians are gonna be like little fish, little sea horses, oh. see like an arowana somewhere off. Oh. <laughs> 15 feet centered around you? Yes. Make it. I thought that was just going to be like a whole bunch of piranhas just... <laughs> As you uh, dropping favor on... Uh, dropping your divine favor, immediately you uh, grasp onto your holy symbol of Valkyr that's around your neck. As uh, this light just kind of... Uh, just kind of ebbs from you like waves as these eth like ethereal waters just kind of circle around your feet and you see these little fish and seahorses start jumping in and out of the water as they immediately go to swarm around uh, your chosen enemies. And we roll their wisdom save. And what's the DC? 14. That's a five. So go ahead and roll me damage. <laughs> I'm maxed on two of them. 18. 18, 18 Every damage? Yeah, everybody takes 18 if they fail. Oh, He's God. Be bloodied. bloodied. He is really bloodied. As these fish start to hop in and out of these uh, these waters that collect around your feet, 
and you just see the one in front of you immediately just get swarmed by an entire school as he starts like trying to like uh trying to hit them off and screaming and just you see him just start to burn with the the radiant energy and he falls over dead Die. and Fifi looks very like proud of her chills she's getting chills because this is her first comeback in forever <laughs> she's like ah yes first blood <laughs> alright anything she's gonna else look, she's, gonna look, she's gonna look at Yoli and Tab and be like why couldn't y'all do that see how easy <laughs> <it is." laughs> alright Yoli what are we doing uh, we'll do his halberd twice cause it's not it's not change it Okay. 19 and uh. 21 to hit? Both of those hit. You so can roll me. Just the one beside him. Just the one beside him? Alright, so roll me damage. 17. Yeah, all right, Yuli, how do we want to do this? <laughs> he's just gonna, like, ooh, as soon as Fifi says that, he's gonna look at her and, like, like a diving, like, hit to it and be like, there. <laughs> as he just kind of looks at you, Ophelia, and just, like, turns around just very cleanly, very well-trained, just takes a, uh, just takes a downward hit as you see his halberd cut from the neck into the shoulder blade, and this guy almost <laughs> splits in half. As he just looks back there. <laughs> All right. Next is Tobin. He is going to do that one. That will hit for sure. Bink. That guy is looking like a mess. As uh, he looks, uh, as Tavin uh, looks to you as he prepares for his next mark and just says, oh, Well, darling, I just think you have a natural gift for this kind of chaos. As he says that, as he's looking at you, and he immediately just like kind of lunges into a bit of a riposte as it kind of spears through uh, this cultist's uh, between the third and fourth ribs is the close, is the quickest way to a man's heart. <laughs> uh, but he uh, is still standing. Phoebe's gonna, I guess, when we start returning, she's gonna talk. Um, she's gonna talk to the other two there in the back, like, why don't y'all come close to there? Y'all scared? Are you trying to persuade them? Yes. Roll me I'm a persuasion, Fifi. Roll me a persuasion. It was a 19 plus 4. <laughs> 22. <laughs> As. Uh, the the one that is currently flying as he kind of stows this orb just kind of like looks at you and sneers just like you take me for a child as the other one just kind of steps back in a way as moment. Oh, the one that, that was in the circle to begin with is his speed is half if he moves her. All right. I don't think that is going to be a problem for him. Okay. As the one that uh, takes a step back, you see him take half a step and then immediately as he does an arrow goes through his eye, and he falls. 
same with uh, the one that is currently adjacent to Tabin. As he had just skewered and retracts his blade, you see another arrow go through his eye, and he falls dead. Is down. As you see, uh, this beautiful elven man run through the door with this uh, kind of long, uh, sandy blonde hair that goes past his shoulders and down his back. He has this uh, bronze circlet that sits on his brow as he's like dressed in these deep greens, uh, earth, these deep earthy colors, mostly greens and silvers. As he's poised with a uh, with a bow, as he lo as he uh, lowers it, uh, looking to all of you. Why are you wasting your time here? There's bigger fish a foot deeper in. And as he says that, this cloud of this uh, this foul this foul smelling cloud of of green fog starts to um, seep in from the front hall uh, right in front of you, Ophelia. From this direction. And um, you see uh, a figure kind of walking through this fog. Uh, roll me a persu uh, perception, actually. You and Yuli. Twenty-six for Yuli. And okay. thirteen for Yuli. All right. And what is your AC? Mine is a uh, sixteen. Yuli. Okay, so 23 to hit. Okay. So this is going to be eight points of force damage. And for, uh, no, for you, Ophelia. As you turn to look at this elven man, and as you're just about to open your mouth to reply to him, you feel this sharp pain lance into your collarbone as this acrid green arrow pierces into, uh, into your chest. And you feel the ebb of poison start to take effect as you take four points of poison. And what was your perception? Uh, 26. Okay. And as your eyes travel past uh, the cultist that is uh, flying in the air, the, the green fog starts to part. And there you see a familiar face. Uh, kind of ashy, uh, purplish skin, long, dark black hair pointed elven ears as he is dressed in also uh, green, but more vibrant poisonous greens uh, uh, as these leathers just kind of strap around him like belts and sashes. And sitting uh, on his brow is a green dragon mask, as you this see near in vain. <laughs> this bitch! Lower uh, this beautifully ornate bow as he just kind of with a clawed hang hand kind of gives you a little wave with his fingers it's been quite some time darling not long enough and we are going to go ahead and take our break right there to gear up for whatever the hell is going to happen next you're in vain you bitch all right. Hey. So we'll be back in a few, guys.
yo, it's Jesus. I'm breaking the fourth wall. I'm coming at you. Just telling you there's some cool things that you can get. Like this mask, for instance. You can also get something like this shirt right here with our logo on it. You can't have this one. This one needs to be washed. There's also things that you can get with our logo on it as well, like a sticker. You can get a button if you want to. I don't know. I ain't your mama. You can get a cool book. Look at this. That's Wes when this got inside him. That's not provocative. Just letting you guys know that I'm breaking the fourth wall here. You can get stuff. You can go down below and you can like type, type, type and go to T Public and get some cool things. Like this shit right here. You can get anything you want except for the things that we don't have. You can't get those there. And just also, just if you want to be this cool bro and you want to like, I don't know, subscribe or uh, it's just a couple bucks a month and it comes to us and it's really, really cool. Well, I'm done breaking the fourth wall. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna be a DM now. That's why you all 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 right. <laughs> Bye guys. We're just we're just Good gonna night. leave. We're done. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's right there! <laughs> it's right just, there. just turn around! Just turn around! <laughs> That's my wife! We pronounce her name in the appropriate lizard tongue is Daddy. Daddy? Daddy. Uh, alright. Oh no, squid! Oh no, gross! Jeremiah, no! I, I just came up here! I had a thing wrong with that. Oh, I eat this. And your Facebooks <laughs> are the same as they've always were. <laughs> I've been staring, I know. Big and beautiful. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my. Because, you know, sometimes friendships require having to give people space so you don't have to always constantly be breathing around their neck and, like, having to always be pestering and responding to every little thing. You know, it's almost as if you're individual hey, people hey, that have your hey, own hey. lives. Stop projecting, it's Yuri's time. <laughs> I can build this. Hey, should I? Hey, I got three Molotovs. I'm ready for war. Bro, who has time for math at a time like this? <laughs> Wes, I, I need you to stop counting, please. I gotta go find a Sharpie. <laughs> bye bye. This is gonna be like that time I passed out at the football party, except with smiles instead of dicks. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I'm dying. Oh, <laughs> run, 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 run! Oh my god, yes, yes. Run, 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 upstairs. Upstairs? Where are we going? Uh, keep going, 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 keep going. Is that the front door? Yes. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Oh my god. Oh, 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 yeah, tickle him there. That's, that's, that's where he, oh, he likes it. Look, he's blushing. Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stare into his eyes, Jeremiah. You gotta stare into his eyes. Look at your face! <laughs> 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 My face! Run! Move! What the fuck was that? <laughs> What the fuck was that? Bro. Oh, wait, again. <laughs> you got fucked up now, boys. Jeremiah. Oh, it's, it's Jeremiah. Jeremiah. It's, it's Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah. I pressed the no. you're, It's I'm Jeremiah. Right now. You're gonna lose if you're gonna lose if you vote for me. I'm not lying to you, Nev. This is 100% me, I have Jeremiah, not Carabao. I got something to say. It's Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah.
It's Jeremiah. Neff, if you win, if Jesus Jess, wins. if you win, I swear to God. Jesus wins. It's not Jesus me. Wins. It's Neff. Jesus. It's me. God damn it! I thought it was you for real. <laughs> God damn it! Houston, and I'm gonna throw Jesus into a fucking air duct. <laughs> it was Jesus's fault. I was just How was it my fault? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I don't like I my don't Demi Doodle time. Wait, wait. And, okay. <laughs> actually, oh. <laughs> Jess, we have this issue where you actually <laughs> fuck me over during the editing more than actually helping. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my key, the dragon. See, look, I lift the tarp and there's a dragon in me. Oh. And the producer is of this movie is who are incredibly talented in their own right, absolutely decided to just kind of go on their own little fantasy and, and totally take the imagination component of it that you would have playing the game and make it real. Is so out of focus. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> it's anarchy. We're not anarchy. <laughs> We're not gonna... Hey guys, welcome to come roll with us. Come hang out with us. Uh, welcome to our Magic Night Stream, where we play magic and probably don't put it on YouTube because we always end up saying stupid shit.
as let's music back up. This one technically not combat, but it's all right. As Ophelia, uh, seen near in vain, stand before you as he lowers this beautifully ornate bow. Uh, as he just kind of like waves at you. Fancy meeting you here. Yes, we always meet at the oddest places. We. Hmm. Well. I'd say that this is more. Not as unexpected as last time. This was more, uh. What's the word? Strategic. And as he says that, uh, you hear kind of like the whistle of an arrow shooting over your uh, over your shoulder, Ophelia, as it kind of like cuts through um, his hair and just pins itself to the wall. And he just kind of like holds position, kind of smiles, and just kind of like looks by you. <laughs> oh, you brought that old corpse with you. Cute. As uh, as he speaks, another figure steps out of this uh, poisonous smog, and you see just like this large, imposing uh, figure, also dressed in black leathers, but with kind of like a greenish tint to his uh, to his skin. As uh, under his arm, he holds a wooden box. And you see as he holds the box aloft and just kind of like, with these kind of claw-like hands, rips it in half. And from it, he pulls out the blue dragon mask and hands it to Nier and Vane. Um, where are we again? We're in, like in the entrance or the... Yeah, so you're in the entrance to the castle of the... To, to the castle of Waterdeep. Bitches. So, is this like... so this is like the... The entrance into this is the entrance to the yeah. So this is the entrance into the castle. So we're still outside. You're inside, actually. Is there any sky roofs? In this area, no. But there is stained glass windows to the right and left of you. (laughs) Darren Vane just kind of like takes the mask, just kind of like looking it over. It's not really my color, but then he just kind of like stows it into his, uh, into a bag on his hip. That makes four out of five, right? As a feeling, what do you do? Oh, if there is a way I can probably finesse where I can get lightning. You so want to finesse the lightning. I will want to finesse lightning. Call lightning. Please. You're doing call lightning? Is there anything specific about needing to be outdoors for that? Because if not, I think it's just magic. And magic do is magic do. Should be fine. Yeah, I think it should be fine. And is there anything specific I need to roll for that? Deck saves. Deck save, okay. Is it... Where are you centering it? Oh, where am I I'm not centering it? Right in between. Right right in between them right here? Yes. Okay. Since I know it's Nero Vane and his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> we just took care of one dragon. Come on. <laughs> This is Rise of Tiamat. You have hopefully fucking you dragons the out the ass here. <laughs> I know. I was like, hopefully you can see the lightning from outside for a good few miles to a certain beach. Hopefully. Roll me. Roll me a religion, Ophelia. Dex.
All right, both of them will pass. 14? Yeah, both of them pass. And uh, for your religion they... with the 14? Yeah, they take half. Okay. As you basically harness the magic that is inherently blessed to you by your god, you feel this, uh, there's uh, this large crack of lightning, um, which everybody on the beach, roll me a perception. Roll you perception? Yes. Twenty-one. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. <clears throat> Alistair, what do we get? Alistair! Uh, sorry. Uh, he got a fourteen. <laughs> fourteen, okay. And Cordelia, what did we get? Uh, you're muted, my dude. Twenty-four. Twenty-four, okay. So for the most part, you will see as these, it's a bright sunny day, Alistair, but it's been an especially righteous day for you. Um, but you can't help but notice these dark clouds start to coalesce towards the castle ward of the city. And you just see this, these massive bolts of lightning just kind of just, just shoot down and hit the highest peaks as they just kind of spark off. And as for you, Ophelia, the lightning just kind of chains down and just lands directly in between them. And do they take any half damage for that, or...? Yeah, half is 12. Okay. Alright. As you see, both of them just kind of brace themselves against the impact of your magic. As Nirenvain just kind of smiles, just... Oh, you're a spicy one, I like you. But I would love to have tea. I'd love to stay and chat, you know, catch up like we did at the party. But I have places I need to be. And that one back there really is he's killing my mood. As he points behind you to the to the elf with the bow. As he just as Niran Vane just kind of um you see him kind of like hold his hand to his chest as he starts to like mutter these words under his breath as they just kind of uh, fall from his lips in like this cold, like raspy whisper. And you see the shadows underneath him and and his uh, companion kind of lengthen and and kind of swirl about in a very strange manner. And for uh, For Yuli, make me make me an Arcana. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. As Yuli starts to get this sense of this is not magic of this. This is magic that feels similar to Liliana. And what she gives. As this kind of... As as their forms start to kind of flicker a moment. And in, in, immediately they just... Everybody uh, in front of you uh, that's not your companion kind of falls into darkness. One by one. And as Nier and Vane uh, starts to fade into the shadows, the elf behind him looses another arrow, and it just passes. It looks like it hit him dead center in between his eyes, but the arrow keeps going as Nier and Vane just turns into shadows itself. It's gone. As you hear uh, a string of cursing and elvish. As the uh, elf behind you, uh, uh, 
as the elf behind you just kind of shoulders his bow angrily. Blasted brat. He's gonna look for Remy. For Remy? Okay. As you run through the castle, uh, you find, for the most part, um, you find guards kind of littered across on the ground, uh, either dead or unconscious or just on the cusp of death. As um, you make it up to the room where Romalia stays, and as you kind of fling the door open, you hear a scream. And you see her just kind of like holding a dagger in her hands, just her hands shaking. I'm gonna, I'll go up to her and be like, just kind of like calmly her arm. Just to double check, I'm gonna like, do you know who I am? Do you know who my mother is? What's my name? You're, you're Fifi. Fifi, you're, you're my darling Guinevere's child. Why, why are you asking me this? Is it, is it over or are they gone? Yeah, they're, they're, they're gone. I'm just making sure you're you. I am I am me. Why would you think I'm not? Mm, I've seen things. Uh, <laughs> are you okay? I'm alive. There was things moving through this castle. Things that I've never seen before. These shadowy beasts scared me. I, I tried to hit as quickly as I could. You left the mask. I... Uh, one more time? I want to ask you, like, you had the mask here. I did. I... <laughs> it's an entire castle full of, of, of well-equipped spellcasters and guards, and I, I assumed it would be safe. No. Wasn't we need to I think we need to call a meeting right now. Yeah, get the ambassadors, the knights, the paladins, every get everybody up in here. As she will kind of collect herself and just uh kind of stay clinging to your side your um, mother as well and the elven man uh, kind of sidles up behind you as he stops to give you a kind of a sweeping bow for riding himself I it might not be the right time but I feel introductions need to be made if we are going to be allies in this endeavor especially since we seem to hold a common Common five head. Well, yes. What is uh, your name? <laughs> Tiamat is an issue, but if she is an afterthought, the other one I'm concerned of. You make uh, King Melendrop of of the Misty Veil. Melendrop. Melendrop. M L M E L A N D R A C H. Melendrop. Melendrock. Melendrock. I am the, for the most part, king that presides over the misty, uh, of the misty forests. I was sent, uh, I, I sent myself as a delegate to, well, for the elves in this matter, the high forest. And if we are to address the awkwardness that was afoot just now, near in vain, as you know him, he is, was, supposed to be next for my thug. Is he your thug? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> the T. I bet that. <laughs> 
so you're his real daddy and not his daddy. <laughs> I am disappointed. I am his father. I had two sons. It's this is a conversation taken. Conversation worth something, but we'll get. Well, let's let's just make haste for this. As you uh you gather into the into the council room, as uh a few of the lords begin to file in. Most of them looking a bit shaken uh, from this attack from the dragon, and just the general chaos that the day wrought. As we go to. Our friends on the beach. Moment. As Alistair. You see a woman just walking towards you at a quickened pace. Uh, full plate armor, uh, like a blue uh -oh. sashed cape. And uh -oh. her faded auburn hair just kind of billowing behind her as she has, you know, one of those looks on her face. <laughs> oh, I know who this is. As she immediately just rushes forward, looking to first Jayon with a very hard look with these, these pale, like, intense blue eyes. And then, looking to you, Alistair, just you two, here, now. Okay. As she points to the ground right in front of her. <laughs> he'll, he'll walk over. Okay. As you both make your way in front of her, as she kind of stands there, hands on her hips, this uh, long sword, uh, for the most part, on a belt that she has over her shoulder, she takes a breath as uh, you can see uh, her armor having been kind of uh, a bit of, uh, of blood across it and some scratches here. And You two were supposed to be guarding the southern wall. Where did you go? Uh, there was a dragon. As she looks behind you to the dead dragon. Alistair, I may only have one eye, but I can see that. Mm. He's just gonna look down at the ground. They'd be quiet. <laughs> I need one of you to explain to me what the hell just happened. Because now I'm getting summons for the castle. You two are going to have to now come. As well... Oh. The rest of you, as she kind of looks past uh, you, Alistair, to everyone else on the beach. Yeah. As Tarsius, I assume you're still standing by the head. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's the bully subscales. She it's just kind of <laughs> looks at you. Young man, did you slay that thing? Or did, but he helped quite a bit. Yeah, actually, if it wasn't for him, I'm rolling persuasion. Many people would have died. Um, thank <laughs> frat for that. As you're, uh, are you pointing to Alistair as you say that? Yep. Okay, roll me persuasion. Cool, because I'm trained in it. Oh, nice. That is a 23. <laughs> Noble. <laughs> Noble. <laughs> As um, can I just roll insight if um, if I can sense if Tarsius is just bullshitting a little bit? <laughs> I mean, I generally mean what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a little Tarsius, bit of, it's okay. a little Cordelia, bit of bullshit. Cordelia, you know your brother. Okay. <laughs> you know how you know with the individuals that he was raised by. One of them, quite proficient in bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> as um sister sarah just kind of studies you a moment tarsius and then 
looks to you, Alistair. Mm -hmm. You helped them. Well, yeah. That's what we're supposed to do. Kind of takes a hand and kind of quit, wipes away a smudge of dirt that was on your cheek. Oh. Mm. That was stupid. To go running headfirst into a battle with a dragon. What are you supposed to do if you encounter anything monstrous such as that? Uh, I prayed first. Well, thank Frat that he knows what you're doing, but what can he do about it? He's up there, we're down here. Um, he's just gonna, like, kick the dirt under his feet. So adorable. All right. You're coming with me, and she'll look to the rest of you. Um, you have all been summoned to... I am me, I, Sister Sarah Donadu. I'm here to summon you all to Castle Waterdeep. No. We believe the incident here today had to do with what is uh, by, by a faction known as the Cult of the Dragon. I'm sure you've heard some stories about them. And if you are capable of dismantling one of the dragons... <laughs> Well, I'll take, I'm still taking some skills. <laughs> Cordelia's still grabbing some skills. Uncle, this. Uncle Patience is going like to look at Uncle Patience Cal will is going to look at so much. and just being like, "What are you going to use the scales for?" I don't know. I'm giving it to Uncle. He has a knack to build things. She'll just look at the scales and just kind of like. Eh. <laughs> I can't grab all of them. If you need some, go grab it. Some. No, yourself. I have my own, and you just see her kind of like dig in dirt and pull out a little bit of one. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the head now too. Basically, it was like I think Uncle had told me something that he can do something with the eye. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh <my God>. just... <laughs> when patient successfully gets her tiny little tooth, she's gonna just take that and put it back. as the guard as need set the guard to just do right well there. as you see uh sir colin just kind of like give hand hand motions to his guards as they kind of start to station and set up a perimeter around the dragon as he kind of looks to uh to you guys occupying by the dragon just um just for safety precaution for you know civilians and such you we're, we're going to try to get this area as cleared as we can Okay. 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 You might want to follow Sister Sarah. She's um Don't you you don't want her to have to repeat herself. I'm digging through stuff. So I have scales and teeth. Yeah. Patience just kinda like nodding like, yeah, I hear that. But she's not my mom. I never said she was. I'm just gonna go tell Tarsius was like I have this bag. It's like the bag that Uncle Cow has, where you can just keep putting stuff, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> she just slides all these scales and sparkles <laughs> in the bag. Look, it's just like getting. No, don't go in there. <laughs> we learned from last time. Don't put your head in it. <laughs> Uncle West told you a story about the one time they put a bag on a giant's head. <laughs> so as you are all being requested to join at castle Waterdeep, do you accept yeah uh, i'm just gonna look at tarsius was like hey is that is that girl with the one eye one of those and then i i raise my my what was that called again I your buckler yeah my butt my little buckler just a, one of those. <laughs> Go like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think she is. I feel, 
feel like half of this is like. <laughs> Patience is just gonna just crouch down, open her bag, put the tooth in, pull out her little ivory figurine of the goat, drop it so Greta can pop out and just be like, well, that was not worth the trip. Grab a goat. <laughs> now I have to grab a goat. I'm sorry. <laughs> There is a goat because Greta is a thing. Oh, is there's a goat. Is it like a large goat? Or is it still medium size? Or is it the same size as a normal goat? Um, it's the size of a horse. Size okay. Of a horse. So as a horse. The, you see horse. this little tiefling like, child kind of dig into her, pa- her bag, pull out this like marble statue. She sets it down. And you see the marble statue just kind of like grow okay. until it grows fur and horns. It's a large goat. As... <laughs> It takes the form of this snowy white mountain goat that's just standing on the beach as it just kind of sits there and it looks at you, Patience, kind of like noses into you and just, ma. <laughs> I miss Greta. Just kind of like pet the goat and then she's going to get on it. I'm like, well, that's something. And I'm curious. I mean, I'm, I'll go over here. <laughs> about lightning saw. Oh. So. All right, so for the most part, we're all heading to the castle. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> always said I should die. As you all uh, get ready to, uh... Uh, Colin gives a, a nod to Sister Sarah. Just I, I'll handle it over here. You go. As he just kind of looks at, at you all, you, you, you have fun. Oh, I realized another thing. Mm-hmm. Patience is also going to look over at Tarsius and be like, I'm sorry, I gotta lose the, I gotta drop concentration on this. Oh, and haste is gone. <laughs> 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 uh, when... When that happens, I'm because uh, Cordelia is just gonna start walking, and okay. as Tarsius becomes really tired, <laughs> I'm like, oh. brother, hurry up! <laughs> you just gotta crawl. <laughs> it's only for like a round, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like six seconds, yeah, yeah. or just one round. Okay. Moving through to the castle, uh, Sister Sarah taking you uh, towards the castle ward as as you uh, start to make your way further into the city, uh, noticing a lot of the fire damage as people are trying to put out fires as quickly as they can. You see uh, soldiers and guardsmen uh, working as quickly as they can to, uh, to kind of um, recede the damage as you pass through a gate into uh, a side of water deep that is pristine, clean roads. It looks like it was just practically untouched by everything that has just happened. As this is a very large city. And you are brought before this this immense uh, stone castle in, uh, brought inside. As you're walking, you see the bo- uh, bodies of royal guards just kind of being pulled off to the side. Uh, as clerics are reading their rites, doing their prayers, uh, they're starting to clean up. As you're getting the sense that something definitely happened here at the same time as the dragon. <coughs> and so you are brought to a council room as... As the skies begin to... um cloud over in gray a light rain just fall against the stone outside as ophelia which you guys all as the lords start to gather for the meeting which you essentially right here The rest of you are brought into yeah. this. Uh, okay, I won't be able to get everybody. Then. Uh. Yeah. 
as you're brought into this uh, council room, this plush rug that covers the stone floor, this large uh, round wooden table set in the middle uh, by candlelight. As you also see this uh, table that had been set up that is just covered with uh, all kinds of food, from meats and cheeses to different kinds of breads and puddings and wine. Yeah, just kind of all... What? Okay. No, it's fine. Let me do that. Sorry. What are you gonna do, Patience? Because I'm thinking eight-year-old wild child I know. sees food. Yes. <laughs> she could honestly give two craps for uh, adult talk, so moves around everybody to yeah <laughs> <laughs> like the little gremlin she is yuli okay as you see uh sister sarah walk forward and take a seat at the table jayon just kind of uh patching himself up with his own uh healing magic goes to dutifully stand behind her uh, with the other guards that are present in the room. You have been brought forward into the Lord's Alliance. As they all kind of uh, look around expectantly. They, they kind of look at you curiously at the door. Ophelia, I'll put you at the table. Oh, Ophelia is in the table. Ophelia has a place at the table. <laughs> As uh, Lady Romalia is just kind of like trying to fix herself up as best as she can, kind of dabbing under her eyes. As uh, she still has her dress all. Yeah, you still got your torn dress. <laughs> as you kind of just kind of lean your uh, you you take a seat between um, King Melindrock and a, a tiefling woman that's at the table. Uh, as she's uh kind of like this deep uh almost dusty red skin uh with this dark hair that kind of crops under her uh under her jawline as she sits next to uh this man that's decorated in these fine black robes that are lined with fur as he just kind of has this general sour look on his face as he looks around at everybody um another woman you see at the table is this beautiful elven woman who uh, kind of sits um uh, sits proper almost as if almost as if she looks like a, a porcelain figure um as she has just this smooth pale skin this dark hair that's done up in these intricate braids as uh lady romalia sits next to sister sarah next to her you see tabin kind of uh hugging the wall by the table uh as he stands next to this uh gentleman that's wearing these fine uh this fine purple jacket as he just kind of swirls a wine unexpected, uh, just kind of like looking rather bored and inconvenienced. And you see a dwarven man who's just uh, kind of watching the room. Uh, one hand just kind of sitting on his axe at his belt as he holds a tanker idly sips as Lady Romalia begins to speak. Yes, I've um, gathered you all here to address the attacks that have gone on today. One here within the castle, and one in the uh, southern ward in the docks. As we all are aware, a dragon has breached our walls and done a considerable amount of damage. As, um, Sister Sarah just kind of uh, indicates to the ones that are still by the door. Just these are, as for the dragon attack, it has been dealt with unexpectedly and a little unorthodox, but who am I to critique? As she uh, nods to you, uh, Tarsius, uh, if you would 
Step forward, young man. Step forward? Yep. My hands on my back. What is your name? Oh, but um, I'm Torsius Chaddington. Your service. A curtsy. <laughs> he does a little curtsy. As, um... You see, uh... Roll me, uh, roll me a perception, uh, everyone. Perception. Not 20, 25 for Cornelia. Okay. Uh, yes, patience, if you want to roll as well. Six. Or if you're too busy eating a half a wheel of cheese. 16. I'm going to grab a, 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 if there's like a, a, like a, yeah, a little section of cheese, she's going to just grab that whole little piece and then quickly move back over. <laughs> okay. All right. What'd you get, Tarsius? 16. 16, and Cordelia, you got 20-something? What'd you get, Jeremiah? Uh, not 20, 25. 25, okay. 16. 16. Uh, Alistair, what did you get? You got an 18. 18. Ophelia, what did you get? 26. 26. You only got as a soon as Tarsius says Chattington, you see this gentleman right here roll his eyes and just <laughs> wow great one of those yeah um whoever's basically i guess um uh patience is gonna be able to hear it and a little bit of tarsius there's gonna be like because of that little insult there's just gonna be a little rattle inside her <laughs> right. i'll say for the most part uh, alistair will pick up on it too yeah did, uh, did I don't think right. I, I forgot that he was. Sorry. Uh, he, uh, he. You would have heard. Uh, you would have seen him kind of like give an eye roll and just kind of mutter under his breath, it's like, "Great, a Chattington." A fantastic at a Chattington's at this meeting. For meetings such as this must be conducted with a proper attitude and not be spoiled by others, <laughs> sir. Patience. Gonna look at the man and be like, at least a Chattington can kill a dragon. I don't know about you. Which, uh, Ophelia, you would know <laughs> this man as uh, Lord Dagult Neverember. This sounds like. As Lord. he would have been, from your time, uh, from your time uh, witnessing on the council, he would have been the acting lord of the alliance. But it was just recently that he there was a motion put in place where he was essentially dethroned from that position. And now that oh, position gosh. belongs to the woman that sits next to him, uh, Lady Silvernia. While all this is going on, Patience is taking Excuse her me, little Lady uh, Larel Silverhand. Taking her little pyramid of cheese and just taking the biggest freaking bite possible, just watching this this unfold. Uh, DM. Yes. Uh, would I recognize any of these individuals and or can I roll a history? Roll me a history, bro. Cool. Gentleman school is Gentleman quite Gentleman school expensive. did not quite teach me what I need to know. Because uh -oh. that's a 12. <laughs> you, uh, you know that in your time in gentleman's school, there was quite an extensive lesson on who's the who, but your lesson didn't quite reach water deep. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, As you, you do have knowledge of how things are conducted in water deep as ter in terms of, of uh, counsel among uh, nobility, as it's kind of a shared power and as such. So... Yeah, so for the most part, you don't quite know them by name, but you know that this is the Council of Water. This is the Lord's Lords. Sure. As um, everybody kind of takes a jab at uh, Dagult for the moment, you see uh, Lady Silverhand just kind of like hold her hand up, uh, kind of like gently puts it over his and just says, Now, 
Staggles. There's no need to, to conduct ourselves like this. I understand you're in a... However, there are more important things at hand than your pride. As he just kind of removes his hand very quickly, just, just kind of uh, scowls there. As uh, Lady Silverhand looks to you, Tarsius, as she kind of, she, she'll stand up and just approach you, uh, kind of hands folded in front, as you see this beautiful elven woman look and you up and down. Stands, I'll, I'll bow. Okay. Which she will give you a, a, a respectful nod in return. Just, I, so you're the one that's... Well, I, I for certain believe it. you look quite capable of killing dragons. Damn, it's my first one, ma'am. She looks a little taken aback at that. And here I thought you made a career out of it, and she kind of chuckles lightly. Nope. As a, I'm gonna, like, look at the fucking 12 puncture wounds on his chest. Uh, I'm still very bloody. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> As a... seems that you you had quite the fight with the dragon as well do you do you, do you require any healing or yeah, I'm quite all right i'll um did i'll i'll sleep it off uh, but it was my compatriots the uh, my sister Delia, the small one with the horns and the nice <laughs> man with the hair yeah when when I was introduced by Tarsius, I'm going to do a little lady bow. Doing this okay. with a robe. <laughs> little, little, little curtsy. Alistair will just wave like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Patience just kind of like looking in between Cordelia and then looks over at Alistair. Waves with uh, her hand with the one that's holding the cheese. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ophelia would have waved back. <laughs> Ophelia waves back. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Oh, yes. I'll I'll do it to you. Okay. Just because. Of... All right, sure. Not to take away from. Yes. So, um, we thank you all for your service for slaying this dragon. That was quite quite the feat, especially among a small group such as yourself. However, our, if I may ask of you that we might wish to ask for your expertise in other matters as we've been a little unsuccessful in hiring skilled adventurers to help us in our cause there's Let's a check smile that Tarsus is trying to hold back when she said adventurer <laughs> so please um help yourself to some food we have some food prepared i can explain the i can i can explain what our proposal is as we as as lady uh, romalia and lady philia can uh recall you had a run-in with one of the worm speakers you said uh, she looks to you ophelia Eh. <laughs> yeah, wasn't a pleasant <coughs> meeting. We go back a while. What's a worm? As, uh, as, um, those things in King... the ground that, you know, <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> Alistair, you would have heard the term worm speaker used in uh, a few of the meetings that you would have attended with Sister Sarah. As them being uh, essentially the heads of the cult that are running things. You know that there are five, and you know that each one represents a different color of chromatic dragon. You just hear him, like, standing in the back, just going, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, King uh, Melandrock kind of uh, openly answers the question, a worm speaker is a coward... And somebody with, well, 
that has a spine like a, you know, uh, of an, of an elephant. Uh, that's a better word. I was going to say illithid, but you know. You know, because they're spineless. For the most Not part. righteous. And uh, unfortunately, one of those swarm speakers, the ones that, the one that you've, that conducted this raid today, my son, former son, I should say, I have disowned him. I'm gonna. And... Is is the one who insulted the chatting the name say disowning a son? Uh, no. Oh. The this guy over here is the one speaking. This uh, elven gentleman with like this ashy uh, blonde hair. I'll need to talk to the patient. Mm -hmm. You do you, Patience. No, it's like, it's like adults are talking. This is freaking boring. She's just... You can move her around wherever you want. She's gonna, like, literally as a child would. So, like, oh, I know, I know. I'm just like, goes and looks at the candle. Goes and looks over Ophelia's hair, because it's pretty. <laughs> Uh, if you come towards her and you're getting food, she'll hand you food. For the she greatly likes Ophelia now. Patience greatly improved. But she's gonna just walk around it and then go and then just stand right next to. Yeah, I won't say anything because it's the first time me meeting them. Yes. But I will definitely eye when he said he disowned his son. Okay. As patience, you're standing right next to Giannis. He's just kind of like, like standing next to him, but facing the same way too. Just kind of. He's doing his best to ignore you. He's gonna reach into her bag and pull out her doodle and hand it, hold it out to him. It helped. Adorable. It helped. I don't want it. But it's you. It's nothing like. Yes, it does. It's nothing. <laughs> like... It's glowering, just like you. See, I got, I got the hair part right. I got. No, you I, didn't. Yes, I did. White lies go <laughs> a like long it. way. <laughs> Just kind of. I got the hair like yours too. I got the nose right. I got the teeth. Take the drawing, like hold it between his fingers. Just like bring it over and just put it off to the side. Thanks. She sees what he did with her artwork and then her nose scrunches and she up at him and just mad M mad child. Okay, he'll just keep looking forward away from you. And then she's gonna walk away right back over here. Okay. <laughs> As King uh, Melandrop continues. Nirenvain came here today on what I suppose is a was a raid conducted and planned very thoroughly by the cult. They probably used the dragon as a means of distraction. As he snuck in, grabbed the blue dragon mask, escaped with it. As soon as he mentions the blue dragon mask, Ophelia's gonna, like, glare at Romelia because she's still upset not hiding it better. Romelia's just not looking at you. She's just looking at, looking at the table. Dagger. As, uh, Lady Silverhand kind of, uh, re returns to her seat, uh, gives you a nod, Tarsius. So, the question is, what do we do from here? Do we chase after this mask, or do we try to find another way to upend the plans? We need to be... I feel that some members that previously held my position as Lord of the Council, and she looks over at Dagult for just a moment for addressing the rest of the room, I think we should start to take a more proactive approach things if we so wish I would like to uh, offer a few 
options on the table. Whether that be we pursue near in vain, wherever he may have gone. We you know, either we pursue near in vain, we um and she just kind of looks around uh as uh the one gentleman uh with the wine glass just kind of uh, saunters his way over. Just like um if you may um, is this uh, human gentleman with like this short, uh, cropped uh, brown hair, the sides just kind of shaved down as he has like this bit of a quaff on top. If I may, there has been a recent problem with the uh, Red Wizards. They've been, um, well, how should you say in common? They've been up to no good shit. As he uh, kind of Looks to you all, uh, cheers with uh, his wine glass to, to all of you at the door. Uh, looks to you, Cordelia, and just kind of like gives you a bit of a wink. Uh, you may call me Tern. Uh, Tern Hornblade. Uh, thunder spells if you're my friend. Thunder. Who's looking at me? Uh, this, uh, this gentleman over here with this. Okay. He kind of gave you a wink, uh, Cordelia. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, she just doesn't even bother that. <laughs> really. Gross. <laughs> I'd say... Okay, and she's doodling in her little sketchbook. I'd say that if we, um... Investigate the ongoings of the Red Wizards. Uh, it's a calculated risk, but it's a risk that might prove more beneficial in our cause. Uh, last I heard, um, as he kind of turns around uh, looking to Tabin, uh, wasn't it um, your wife that worked with them? I mean, through the rumor mill, of course. <laughs> as Tabin just kind of swirls his own wine glass. Well, anybody that has ears obviously knows what she's done. Don't see it as much... Hardly a scandal when she's no longer my wife. What she does is her own business. For the most part, as Lady Silverhand, just, okay, so... The Red Wizards are a problem. Problem with the Blue Dragon Mask. That might be a little time sensitive as she looks to, um, uh, she looks over to, uh, the dwarf. Um, have you heard anything from, have you heard anything from the, um, from the north and the, the outposts regarding Varum? As Ophelia, you remembering that Verum was the name of the white. The blue. The white As uh, the white worm speaker of the cult. Okay. The one that, um, for Ophelia, but for everybody that was also involved. He was the individual that the cult had uh, passed Talus over to choose as the white worm speaker. Thing that made Java go, that's sketch as fuck. Yes. As. I had it. As he, uh, uh, kind of gives a nod. Just. Yeah, I heard there was. Move, there was movement going around up north, but I'd have to poke around my usual uh, contacts to see. As for the most part, the meeting will continue on. I'd say for about a good couple of hours, um, you would all be indulged in information regarding what could happen next. Such as... Um, you learn that uh, Lady Silverhand uh, is now the acting lord of this council as Dagult Neverembar had been removed 
from his seat. The tiefling woman next to him does not speak through the entire encounter. However, she just simply listens as the rest of the uh, council does not directly speak to her. Uh, they just they acknowledge her presence, but not directly. As uh, King Melindrock uh, goes on length about how near in vain is how he believes he's uh, mounting an attack on uh, his old keep within the high forests. As near in vain is looking to overthrow his father and take the crown that he believes is rightfully his. But Melindrock has other things to say about that. Um, it's uh, through Sister Sarah that says that she is uh, collaborating with the armed forces that had come with uh, that had come from the isles uh, that you originate from, Ophelia. Uh, one uh, one said commander uh, name that is mentioned is that of a General Orion. As he has uh, been gathering together uh, a, uh, a troop of... Yes? I know who he is. Yes. I would hope so, Yuli. Yes. As he had been gathering together a... Uh, Essentially, a small platoon to uh, defend the keep and to stop near in vain once and for all. As he had gone with, um... fuck, hold on, I had the name and then it just escaped me. Yes. Okay. There's the word. As um. The name, uh... It's important backstory stuff. Alongside a, uh... Captain Craven. As well. With that, there is information about the Red Wizards, um... There seems to be uh, more activity from them popping up in different pockets of the Swords Coast. There's not a lot of information on it, but it is something that has been noticed specifically by T As, uh, for the most part at hand, the council meeting goes on. There's a few arguments here and there, but uh, Tarsius, as you know, these arguments are very much heavily veiled in etiquette, as they do. Uh, backhanded compliments here and there, uh, a few uh, stern words that kind of shut down the other here and there. The one. Which, the for audience. for those that aren't well adept in the in in the uh, intricacies of uh, and noble meetings, it seems like they're just talking in circles, and it's. It tends to get a bit boring, and Alistair, if you stand in place for too long, you feel like your entire body's starting to fall asleep in, in that armor. <laughs> so you just kind of have to hop back and forth just to keep your feet from getting the tinglys. Patience is going to just there and be like, uh, do they always do this? Looks over at Alistair. Uh, yeah. After, like, <laughs> yeah. a couple of hours of me listening in to it and hearing the people discuss personal squabbles um I guess Tarsius will just go <clears throat> and it's probably gonna be pretty loud with his volume right. and voice right oh yeah with your bass yeah with the bass um if I may it sounds like we're going a little bit off subject here a couple of times but if we have one mask that is protected and we have four that they've gotten some with your son that we could get provided information on what he's done unless you don't know that and that's why he has a mask shouldn't we specifically send out individual task force to go get set mass as I groups 
such as ourselves, small enough that can do a task without having permission to deal with bureaucracy and make us slow down, have an additional three more sets of those groups, people that you trust, because getting one mask at a time will be too time consuming and people will die, especially if they have dragons. Just try to save the people. And I'll take a step back. Since okay. I know I overstepped my bound. As they kind of digest what you said, uh, Jayon probably be the first one to speak up. Also, uh, not in his place to do so. But the I think the problem that they're having is that they have four masks, but there's one that's missing, and nobody knows where it is. It's from what we've heard, or at least what some people have talked about, it was with a group of adventurers, but now it's just gone. Nobody knows where it is, and we're pretty sure the cult is adamantly searching for it, so I think... Honestly, I think people should be looking for that one. If we Why? at least have one mask. Well, because if we have one, then they can't use do whatever they can with all five of them. That's the point. They want all five. Correct, but if one, one is gone. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. The child's going to speak, too. Okay. But I'll let Tarsius finish what uh, he was I was, saying. Uh, I was like, if you're going to speak, I was going to grab you, pick you up, put you on my shoulders so you have uh you have a podium oh cool yeah she would it's like okay but yeah, you remember. said it's, that it's, it's, yes patience like tugs your hand has one and if you know where his location is and you get his mask then you have one that you at least know where the location of it is what color was that She's just gonna kind of mut because I will say every single time someone mentioned a different like cult, like a different worm speaker or a different color, she would have been sitting there and just started sketching a different color dragon. <laughs> like every single time when they mentioned the blue dragon, now she's gonna sit there and draw a blue dragon. As much as these people want all five masks to create some five heads of a dragon, I'm not quite sure what that means. But if one mass is gone to history, that's positive. What? They can never summon said dragon. If with, we now know everyone in this room, with that Tarsi could be more information for them to get us. They already came in and took one of the masks. And how many of you knew of that mask? The less people that know, the better. With I, Tarsi uh, mm -hmm. five dragon, five, five dragon, would... Patients have any idea who he is? Roll me a religion. As, um, for the most part, uh, as when Jayon speaks, um, he's immediately met with uh, a stern look from Sister Sarah. Yeah. She just kind of clears her throat at him. 17. 17? Your mother has mentioned talks of how dragons would venerate to a certain goddess. Of oh, dragons. Bad. Very bad. Oh, they're trying to bring her. Yeah, so, That's um. Really as it oh. is, uh. uh King Melandrock just kind of, uh. stands up and shoulders his bow. Just. I think I need to, um. I'll take my leave. I, I have to go. I'll be taking my leave. I need to go prepare for the journey back to my homeland. As to answer your question and your uh, very insightful points, man. The only problem we have with um, combating against uh, the rat that was once my son is the problem of the dragon that he rides around with. As it is taking quite an annoying fancy on him. Dragon? Yes, a very large, very nasty green dragon. Hmm. She's gonna skitter down from uh, Tarsius. She climbs down you like a... And she's going to and just like walk... Put her down. Yeah. She's gonna walk straight up to uh, Melandrock. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not sure what a child such yourself would need to know. As um, I I I feel like this is no business for children. She did quite good magic. More well, than in some things. Well, I've my seen. question is, is, like, would he even notice, like, on her face stuff like that, like? Um. Uh, You just look like a tiefling child to him. As a uh, tavern who just kind of would have been skirting by the walls for the most part, just listening in but not participating. Just Melandrock, you'd be surprised how intelligent children are. No, because just because yours was a bad example, don't sour the rest of them. No, because pa patience is literally going to stand there, and it's like, how big is the dragon? Like how, you know, and when now knowing what color it is, she's going to start listing like different things about the dragon. Just like. As from what you know, it's about it, it, it being described as a as a huge dragon. Mm -hmm. So the size yeah, okay. is huge. OK, so it's an adult. Um, trying to think. Well, I'm gonna right. gulp again. Look we'll at the and uh, we'll and get the green. There you go. As a as, when she's done talking, I'm gonna gulp and speak out of term again. I will aid you in whatever you all need, but I do want to make a point clear. We're not and uh. Look at my wounds. I'm not. She's not. We're not here to kill dragons. We're not here to kill anything at all. It's not the righteous thing to do. If we must defend ourselves and those of need, yeah. But don't think of us as executioners. As uh, Sarah just uh, silently kind of nods in agreement with your statement, uh, Tarsius. What we, what we need is heroes. We don't, as he said, we don't need executioners. We don't need mercenaries. We need people that are willing to do good for the sake of good. This shouldn't be some squander about whose land is what and what anyone else is gaining out of this. We have a threat at hand, and it needs to be dealt with justly and righteously. Yes. <coughs> mm hmm Back and around his gun. Not that it's attacked or anything. It's as he would explain it is any time that they would have attempted to get close to Niren Bane, the dragon would be there to defend him yeah. and pretty much lay waste to any uh, forces that they would have against him. The dragon, uh, God, I forgot the word, but the dragon strategically has been a problem for them. Well, I thought of like one thing that I'd probably mentioned it's mm -hmm. like. Why? Is Melandrox kind of looks very turbed by your knowledge? They're also really, 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 really good. Hunters. Plus, they're. Plus I'm big. sorry, you're cutting out. You're cutting out. You no, speak she'll up. be just. She'll just say like you know, uh, they're really, really skilled hunters. Their poisons are really big in too, and hmm. if you're worried about making kingdom what's because like i'm assuming uh because it's in you're from a forested area correct the high forest. what's the chances of it playing chances of it playing what sorry the laying waste of the forest oh. not to be rude or anything like that but then you say that you disowned him um your son doesn't really sound like 
someone who would care much about the homeless that you hail. Melandrock looks to you, kind of tilts his head, slightly, almost amused. You're right. He doesn't. I care what happened in my forest. We elves were once the greatest civilization to grace Feyre. And my people are an heir to that history. I don't... I don't want to squander our waning strength, the people. Near in vain is certainly someone who squanders it. Kind of shoulders his bow and just gives a bow to the council. I will be back on the morrow. Same time. Uh, if we all wish to meet at noon. I will be here if you wish to join me and General Orion in efforts to take down Niren. You may join us if you wish, or if you have other matters to attend to, then it's also fine. The offer does stand. Any help is appreciated. This quite a, a dire moment. Not for myself, but for, for everybody in Pharaoh. We can't let them have these masks any more than, than what they have, and it's... Well, that should be the end of everything, from what I understand. Tiamat comes forth. She destroys everything as we know it. So it's up to you if you wish to assist us. If, you look, if you're looking for compensation, I'm certain we'd be more than willing to give it. But, as Sister Sarah says, I think we just need people that want to do the- I want- so. oh. Patience says that she wants to do the right thing. Smiles at you. Kind of pats your head. Then maybe there is hope for us yet. Gives a bow to all of you. Bow on the truck. Walks out <clears throat> of the door. When yes. When uh, he melon drop. Mhm. Mm uh, Ophelia's gonna stand up from the table. And... Yes. I think the best. Certainly, given if he finds one more, wherever it would may be, then that, that on the way, find any red, red wizards. And then she's gonna like leer down a little bit and look at mostly, not so much. No, she's gonna look at the rest of the table and leer at them. She's like, all I know is the only people who knew that blue dragon here, they even wanted. And then she walks towards the group. Okay. She's gonna walk through the group through the end. And be like, if y'all can fight against a dragon, I'll fight against with both with everyone here. And uh, everybody is approached by this uh five foot and some chain uh Triton woman. Uh she would have been dressed in a, in a nice, fine uh, dress, but you see the bottom part uh, has been torn <laughs> above her knees as she's kind of roughed up and dirty, her iridescent hair just kind of tussled oh. as she shoulders a, a trident. And she'll bow to everyone there. Not oh. in the best bow ever, but like... Whenever she looks 
looked at everyone at the table. Can she do like an insight to see if anyone kind of had ruffled feathers? Yeah. Said, that there Go ahead and roll roll me an insight. Fifteen. For the most part, everybody um, looks concerned. Looks, uh, for the most part, startled. And as always, uh, Daggle Never Ember just looks just uh, just sour. For the most part, everybody more concerned about all the information brought to the table as one by one they start to get up and disperse when each person stands and leaves i'll do a courteous bow okay so one by one they just start to go uh lady silverhand uh, gives you all a curtsy. Just... We... You are invited to return tomorrow, if you wish. If you need lodging, I'm sure we can provide something. We thank you for your service. Hopefully, we can work towards better things gather her skirt. Leave. Dagult leaves without saying anything, followed by the tiefling. Uh, Taren kind of saunters out. He kind of gives everybody a, a little wave. You see a little sparkle of magic at the end. Ooh. Ta-ta for now. Ta-ta-ta. <laughs> and Sister Sarah gathers her paladins. Uh, Alistair, you being one of them. As you head back to your barracks for the day. Uh, before as... Alistair leaves, I will yes. approach him and uh, do like the the bro like hand thingy. At least I'll extend my hand and then like reach over and grab his entire forearm. As, as his entire <laughs> hand just encloses around your forearm, Alistair. I do well... greatly appreciate what you did for my sister. I, uh... Oh! Any anytime, bro. And he's gonna like slap Tarsius on the shoulder. Clank. Clank. <laughs> All right. I'm bleeding. Gives you a friendly bro pat <laughs> on the shoulder. Bing bing. Yep. All right. Like a little spurt of blood comes out from that wound. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> oh my. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Great. <laughs> As new friendships are being forged through this turn of events. As Alistair, you were taken back to your barracks for debriefing and obviously paperwork between you and Jayon. <laughs> yes. Jesus. I remember something in Tarsius's early life and I need to tell patience in a minute okay as everybody is dispersing uh cordelia and tarsius you hanging back to um essentially return to your um temporary lodgings at the moment yeah ophelia and yuli uh returning to the seaside manor that her parents stay in as uh tarsius cordelia and patience remain i'm gonna look at patience Oh, when I was like your size, I was like a baby. Not your baby, but I was a baby. That was your size. Uh, my my uncles, they made me some armor, but it was the dragon bones and I had a dragon knife made out of, a, I think, one of their teeth. It was really impressive. Do you want to, like, hang out with us? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> And so you all that, yes. <laughs> head back. You all head back to the Boar's End, uh, soon to be open tavern, as your uncles are hard at work helping surrounding neighbors with their uh, damaged properties, helping people 
giving them hot food and just sheltering them for the night as this is where we will end tonight's session uh, with the city covering from a dragon attack from an attack from the cult as they now have four masks in their possession and with many plans set before you about what to do next some more urgent than others but it's in the end what you all decide to do <laughs> so yeah that's that's it for tonight so thank you all for watching uh through this fun adventure i was excited to put it together uh, mm -hmm. this video will be edited and put online later on youtube on our youtube channel um check out all of our friends i got all their links down below talent and claw uh we've got our extra life thing still running i believe so if you want to donate feel free to uh donate spread the word it's all for a good cause and you know be kind to one another yeah i ran out of words <laughs> <laughs> my brain says and i'm done bye okay, bye, bye everybody